Hey, Donna, put a hold on them payroll checks. You putting the squeeze on me really takes me back. Hey, I know a new girly club where we can ogle some ladies. No cover charge. Let's not be lazy. Keep it up. Punch and kick and kick. Almost over, ladies. Give me a few more. Woo-wee, what a workout. I'm sweating like a lumberjack. All right, good job, ladies. See you next week. What? Hey there, Luann. Good workout. Yeah, it looked good from here. If you were looking at me, I'm going to have to have both of your gym memberships revoked. And I would hate to do that because you both look terrible. Uh, no, no, no. We're, we're, we're just, uh, uh... Scouting talent. Yeah, I'm a boxing promoter and uh, we're just here scouting talent. I'd love to see you in the ring. Boxing. Huh? My mama's in prison because she fights so much. Do you think that there's some way her genes could have been passed down to me? Wait a minute, Randy. Luann here might make a really good opponent for Greta. Yeah! We could put up posters all over town, call it Beauty and the Beast. Which one am I? Because if it's okay with you, I'd like to be the Beast. <laughs> Did I scare you? Okay. Guess who I ran into at the gym? Buck Strickland. <laughs> he watched me do taboo, and he thinks that I'd make a great boxer. Look, Luann, I fought at the Y. Trust me, you are no boxer. Yeah, huh? Friday at midnight in the back room at Sugarfoot's. And I am going to stand up and fight and be respected just like you said. <sighs> Luann, the kind of women that box don't have 50 stuffed animals on their bed. Hey, why don't you spend Friday night watching one of those movies you like, where the people fall in love and then one of them dies? Oh, Luann, you have to understand your uncle only wants the best for you. That said, everything he just told you, complete jackassery. Dear Lord, one of your creatures may be hurt tonight. Please, let it be the other creature. Amen. Sam, more beer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Luann. Looking good. Yeah. Now, just remember, the key to boxing is to jump up and down. Yeah, keep bouncing. Bounce and weave. Okay, folks. You paid your monies. Here come the honeys. The beauty and the beast. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Watch the kids or I'll disqualify you and you'll lose your free rib dinner. <sighs> Tell Joseph and Dale if he's listening good night and get to bed. I got a live feed with the hostess at Sugarfoot's. She's got Luann's fight on the speakerphone. Oh, God, she went through with it? Tagged her good. What a left hook. Oh, yeah. You didn't think I could do it, but I did it. Great job, Luann. You want to fight some more for us? I, I got a contract right here. It's very fair. <sighs> oh, my gosh. Did you hear that, Uncle Hank? They want me to be a professional fighter? <gasps> I'm a professional fighter! Mmm, <laughs> <laughs> women boxing, huh? If they wear gloves, how do they scratch each other? No, Bill, they punch pretty hard. And Lou Ann was really something. I tell you what, Dale fights more like a girl than she did last night. So I bet a cashier. I'm a street fighter. <clears throat> Lou Ann, I always hope to give my old boxing gloves from the Y to Bobby, but, uh, well, you know. Anyway, I'd be honored if you'd wear these in your next match. Oh, Uncle Hank. Every time I punch someone in the face, I'll think of you. To Luann! 
and getting rich off of pretty ladies even better than sleeping with one. Well, neck and neck. Well, looky here. Now, I know it must have killed you to throw that fight, Biggin, but it was one hell of a convention dive. If you had any looks, you could be a Hollywood actress. Mm, thank you. <laughs> Here's your flop fee. Don't touch anything on the way out, huh? Times have changed. Train boxers willing to take a dive are too goddamn expensive. Hey, Bora, you take a punch for a hundred dollars, wouldn't you? No, sir. Two hundred? Yes, sir, I would. <clears throat> okay, Luann, Buck says this Bora, the slamming Slavic, is nine and four, and she used to pull a dog sled back in her native Croatia. When my fans are out there respecting me, I feel like a strong, powerful, ooh, independent woman. Luann, I brought you some tassels. Tassels? Yeah, it's a fight game, Boy Scout. We need a little show for the people. Oh, I get it. A little flash, like Hector Macho Camacho. Light on your feet, Luann. She's one of them Russian brawlers. Now, hop like a bunny. Hop like a bunny. Oh, uh, but you know, like uh, Muhammad Ali said, hop like a bunny, sting like a bee. Uh, that was float like a butterfly, sir. Okay, now, Luann, southpaw, southpaw. <laughs> now, Luann, you beat some tough fighters, and I think you're ready for a step up in competition. Yeah. You know, I was reading in the Guinness Book of World Records about a woman who is seven foot seven. You think she'll fight me? Uh, maybe, but I was thinking about the best female fighter in Texas, George Foreman's daughter, Frida Foreman. <coughs> Seems she's managed by her father and four brothers named George. Ah, uh, uh, I already called the Foreman camp. They told me they want nothing to do with Luann. Yep, they're ducking us. But don't worry, we'll line up another top-notch opponent. Has the pretzel lady got back to us yet? Whew, I'm sorry I'm late. I couldn't get used to the heels. What is that? It's my outfit for my next match. Mr. Strickland says that if I ever want to fight Frida Foreman, I need an image. So, ta-da! I'm a fighting French maid. <laughs> Dang it, I thought I made myself clear when I told him no boxing thong. I'm gonna go talk to Buck. You need to practice, so get out of that stupid outfit. And for God's sake, don't leave it where Bobby can find it. Luann, if you want to be punched by Frida Foreman, then Peggy Hill is the one that can make it happen. Come on, let's go pick a fight. It's just that Luann and I are trying to build a legitimate boxing career. Oh, Mr. Buck. Uh, yeah, I got you, Hank. No skimpy costumes, no dressing her like a rabbit. Thanks for coming by. Sir, Mr. Randy is throwing up again. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Thanks, uh, Penelope. Wait a minute. You're supposed to be the slamming Slavic. But you're just Buck's maid. Buck's maid? Uh -huh. All right, all right. You caught me with my pants down. I threw patsies in there to protect your pretty little knees. Oh, God, you mean every fight has been a fraud? But what about Helga the Hammer? Librarian. Never been in the ring. Okay, Luann. Now you have to trash talk and embarrass her. It's the only way she'll accept a fight with you. You ready? Uh-huh. Hey, Frida Foreman, everybody knows you're nothing but a Frady cat. Wow, you have pretty eyes. Who the heck are you? Luann Platter. It's nice to meet you. Yeah, whatever. Hey, yeah, you, you big can of beans. You give Luann here a match. Unless you're scared, huh? Are you scared? Oh, yeah, you're not a champ. You're a chump. Chump, chump, chumpity chump. Shut up, Grandma here. Oh, Frida! Frida! All right, you wanna fight? You gotta fight. And when I get done whooping up on her, I'm gonna come looking for you. What'd I do? No, it's 
That's amazing, isn't it? Now, we better train. She's much bigger than me. <laughs> I think she's even bigger than you. <laughs> Well, we cannot tell her that her fights are fixed. It would wreck her world. Well, maybe she'll get food poisoning. You gave it to me that one time, you could do it again. Excuse me for making chicken tartare. I could marry Frida Foreman and refuse to let her fight. Man, I'll tell you what, you know, talking about them dang old oldest champ in the world, man. They know two times wearing that old crown, man. Everybody talking about that old grease, talking about them five pounds since I got another lost no little thing, man. You're right. George Foreman's a minister and a family man. He'll listen to reason. Boomhauer does it again. So if you like your food lean, mean, and tasty, don't forget to pick up one on your way out. Mr. Foreman, sir, I know you don't know me, but I'd like a minute of your time. You want a grill? Uh, no, sir. I'm pretty well set for grills. I sell them for a living, <laughs> along with propane and propane accessories. Good man. What can I do for you? Well, my niece Luann challenged your daughter to a boxing match, and she's not even in Frida's league. But I haven't been able to bring myself to tell her that. So I was thinking if you guys can drop out of the fight... Luann won't get her feelings hurt, or her face hurt, for that matter. I respect that you want to protect your niece. You know I didn't want my daughter to become a boxer. Neither did Mohammed. But Joe Frazier, on the other hand, he had his baby girl boxing in the crib. So you'll cancel the fight, champ? You got it. Thank you. You're acting just like I'd expect a gold medalist to. Hey, maybe there's something you can do for me. How'd you feel about carrying my grill in your shop? Oh, uh, sorry, we have a strict policy about that. No novelty grills. Novelty grill? Yeah, you know, no offense, but your grill is kind of like an iron. You calling my grill an iron? I've been hit below the belt before, but nothing like this. I think it's a great product for dieters or little girls who want to play barbecue, but you can't compare it to a propane-powered grill. Fights on! What? No. I said fights on. What's the matter? Smelling all that propane cause your brain damage? That's what it does, you know. No, that is not accurate. Those studies were all done on sick monkeys. And at least my grill isn't sold in housewares. Let it go, Daddy. He ain't worth it. You're right. George Three, get this man out of my face. I'm sorry I'm late. I ran farther than I ever have before. So look out, Freda Foreman. Uh, Luann, those fights you had were fixed. The fighters were fixed? Like my puppy? No. You see, Buck knew that men would pay to see you dance around the ring. So he found a bunch of cleaning ladies for you to fight and knock out. But I'm a great boxer. And that's why the fans are always yelling and hollering and throwing... Dollar bills and oh god, am I stupid? So, uh, you can't fight Frida. She's a real athlete. She'll kill you. You could take a dive, like Bora and the others. Then you'd still get paid at least because you showed up. Nope. That's cheating. And I got too much self respect for that, even if every guy in the world thinks I'm a bimbo. Guys suck. <laughs> I didn't see you in Taibo today. Oh, that's probably because I wasn't there. I don't like Taibo anymore. It reminds me that I'm not really a boxer. Oh, I wish I could quit. But if I don't go, my modeling agent yells at me. He's also my husband. Hey, I can hook you up with him if you're interested. But just look out because he gets a little grabby. No, I want my next job to be something that men will respect me for. Men are never going to respect us. That's why we've got to use what God or the surgeon gave us to get what they got. Money. So you'd do anything for money? Or a car. So, if you were me, would you take a dive against Frida Foreman for $1,500? Or a car. All right, now raise your hand. Which one of you fellas is the bachelor? Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, Luann with you? She is not going to show tonight. She asked herself, what would Jesus do if he were a lady boxer? The answer? 
not shell. That, oh, oh, there she is. Luwayan. Okay, I'm ready to take my dive now. You promised the check will clear, right? Yeah, eventually. Now, don't get hit. You're fighting my aunt next week. Oh, and those gentlemen over there are here for a bachelor party. Now, come on, give them a big old bouncy hello. <sighs> So you can see my grill is perfect for a big man like yourself. I've told you six times. I'm not interested. And go. Bounce, baby! Woo! <laughs> One. Two. Hey, I got some singles! One. Oh, I cannot watch this. Say my name! Five. Say my name! It's Roddy! Spank yourself! <laughs> Eight! Nine! What are you doing? Stay down! Stay down! Oh my god, she's gonna get killed! Taking her picture for the calendar this week. If I could take a punch like that, I might have been able to think of a name besides George for all my sons. That gal's all skull and no brains. She's like Joe Frazier with lipstick. <laughs> you about taking pictures of me? Whoa, whoa, no, I wanted a picture with you. I saw your fight. You lasted three rounds with Frida Foreman. You are one tough chick. <sighs> Thank you. That's all I ever wanted to hear. You know what? This is just the right place, especially after our last outing. <laughs> Two piña coladas in men, and she starts talking about stealing a car. <laughs> Dark rum make me crazy. Ba jump peng tong sai sang ta lep dok sai sang ti lek di guai. What did she say? She think your feet lovely, and it an honor to work on them. Ah. Oh, oh. Now where in the heck did I park my? This way. My memory trick is usually fail-safe. When we got out of the car, I associated the parking section with William Shakespeare. So naturally, the car should be parked in 2B. Unless I was thinking of not 2B. <laughs> Will you look at those delinquents horsing around with those shopping carts? I bet they're... Oh, my God, it's Bobby. <laughs> oh, man. Bobby? Joseph. This is what you are doing in your after-school program? Program was shut down, dude. Budget cuts. So we're playing shopping cart chicken. Hey, we can get them to push us. No after-school program. Now who Connie gonna tutor? Bums and rail yard? This is ridiculous. Our kids should be enriching their minds, not using a parking lot as a playground. Something has got to be done. The people who canceled that after-school program are gonna wish we never found our car. Where is that frickin' thing? We have a real issue here. That after-school program is important. Absolutely. Our kids get out of school in the middle of the day when they air all those sex and drug-filled after-school specials. Oh, Peggy, let's take this to the school board tomorrow. They're not gonna know what hit them. Well, I gotta tell you, your initiative is really impressing me. And not just because you're ladies. Okay, girls. Hands in the middle. Let's go. 
for the children on three. Ready? One, two, three, for the children. For me. Oh, I bet this must be very exciting for you men. Where you're from, you probably didn't have the freedom to criticize your government. Why would I criticize government in Laos? My father was general. I do what I want. I was peasant's worst nightmare. Thank you, Mrs. Chapman. Your request to ban sections F and S from the library dictionary has been noted. Okay, everybody have their talking points. Yeah. Oh, one little thing though, Peggy Hill. Keep it short. Sometimes you go on and on and on. I find it charming, but you might lose other people. Good advice. And you probably should not call anyone hillbilly, or redneck, or dumb monkey. Check. Well, I guess that does it for tonight's meeting. Nice work. Excuse me. Peggy Hill and the Coalition to Save the After School Program at Tom Landry. Sorry, Mrs. Hill, but these meetings last from 6 to 8, and it is now... 8 o'clock. Oh, great. Now Connie gonna end up smashing carts like brain-dead delinquents. No offense. None taken. I wasn't even listening. Now, here's the game plan. We take things to the next level. New t-shirts? <laughs> no. Sweatshirts? Not yet. What we have to do is get on the school board. There is a seat open and an election coming up. Do you really think we can win an election? I know we can. You know, the turnout in these things is always very low. The secret is to find a group of voters that feels overlooked, then look at them. And I can get votes from Laotian community. I give $5 tip on French manicure. I'm the lady die. Well, I warned the folks over at Shady Pines Trailer Park about that tornado. They were so grateful they're still naming dogs after me. Great! We've got pockets of votes in the Laotian community and in the trailer parks. Then I score countywide with my two-year teaching degree. I wonder which one of us should run. I mean, Peggy's a ball of fire, and me and she's smart as a whip. Either way, our kids are in such good hands. 198, 199. Hey, these are supposed to be 200 thread count sheets. Damn Egyptians. But man, three women can't fill one position. This school board seat, not Boom Howard's hot tub. Well, when you think about it, I'm most logical choice. My daughter, a proven genius. Plus, my perfectly symmetrical face is pleasing to voters and inspires trust. And it sure would be nice to finally get a Laotian in power. We gotta eat their fish on Friday. They're gonna eat our rice noodles on Wednesday. For breakfast! You've got the most school-related experience, the best interpersonal skills, and a smile that lights up a room. Yep, Peggy, I gotta say, I agree with all your reasons why you should be the one to run for school board. Well, thank you, Hank. But let's not lose sight of why I'm doing this. It's for the children. Now, I'm not saying men hate children, but I really love children. They are three out of the five points in my five-point plan. I haven't quite figured out the other two yet. I'm thinking something about America. Wow, dynamite. Even though Dale says Principal Moss may try to assassinate us, I think this is gonna be nothing but fun. I can't wait to get started. I have so many ideas I couldn't sleep all night, so I make pecan sandies. I appreciate your enthusiasm. Now, it's obvious who our candidate should be, but it would be presumptuous of me to do the nominating. So? I'm not sure how obvious it is. Oh, you mean me? No. <gasps> well, I'm not sure I'm the person for the job. Wait. Well, no. somebody got to do it for the children. And if no, no one else wants to run, no. no one? Five points. <laughs> All in favor of me? Wait, y'all. Thank you, Peggy. Nancy? Well, since Peggy's okay with it. Okay, then. Done deal. Oh. Hold on. Not that I want the job or anything, but... Then don't sweat it. Oh, and I wouldn't drink from there. Doggy has a cold. And I can't help but think that men did it on purpose. Those pecan sandies were astonishingly dry. Come on, Peggy. They're not shy people. If men wanted to choke you, she would have just reached over and done it with her hands. I will give her that. 
You know, Peggy, you could still be the power behind the scenes, just like that little fella in The Wizard of Oz. Yeah, yeah. You're right. And maybe next election, I can run another candidate. Then another. Before you know it, I'll be running the entire city from my bathtub. Mrs. Soup and Mrs. Gribble are waiting in the living room. Here's breakfast. And I typed up the monologues from Leno and Letterman. Good work. Now, I need you to highlight last week's Doonesberries and tell me why they're funny. Peggy, are we out of butter? It's behind the cottage cheese. Behind the cottage cheese! Okay, people, I'm glad to see you're all here. Now, let's... Uh... War room. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Thank you. That was Bobby. He was testing the line. It works. Okay, first off, we're gonna need to make some signs. Uh, we're just about done making signs, Shug. Men to win. I don't get it. What not to get? I'm men. I wanna win. Hmm, maybe we should focus group that. Nope, no go. Women 18 to 45 will be turned off. Here's what we're gonna do. You know what would be a big help, Peggy Hill? Starbucks run. Oh, I'll have a Frappuccino. Bag of Maryland's. I'm all for men running for office, but she better not take my guns away. She's running for the school board. Then she better not take Joseph's guns away. Well, I'm not crazy about making holes in my lawn, but I guess it's for the children. You know, my lawn is already dead. Maybe we could put all the signs there. No offense, Bill, but this campaign is about hope. Oh, Right. I'm not saying you have to use the moment of silence to pray that kids who don't believe in God can just sit quietly and smirk about how they've got it all figured out. Thank you, Mrs. Chapman. The next question is for men. Hello, everybody. And to my Laotian friends, Sabaydi. Yeah, you've been talking about keeping the after-school program going? I think I hear the sound of my property taxes going up. And you fat cats with your pie-in-the-sky programs and your free prescription drugs? No, no, no. That's not me. I do not want to increase taxes. Yeah, sure, you'd love it. No, no, you're not listening, Jethro. Let oh, me this is this ugly. Someone you. has to stop what the bleeding. <gasps> what my candidate is trying to say is... That we will cut the fat and leave the muscle. I know what I'm trying to say. It's what I just say. Please bear with my candidate. Obviously, English is not her first language. But how about a hand for her courage? <gasps> you crazy? Get out of here. The thing to remember, people, is that you are not going to have to tighten your belt because we are going to fix the pants. Give me that. You need me. Fix the pants. Uh, can I ask the candidate a question? What are you going to do to raise educational standards? Without raising taxes. Fat cats! Let's see how you handle this one. We all concerned about educational standards. And I tell you where the problem is. The teachers. Did you know our school system require only two-year degree to be substitute teacher? Is that true? So you want to know how I raise standards without raising taxes? I tell you after I look into your hearts and you look into mine. No teacher, full-time or substitute, can teach our kids without having a four-year college degree. Wait, I only have a two-year degree. What? Hands! She's taking teaching away from me. That's my life. How dare she? I groomed her, I taught her everything, and she has the nerve to stab me in the back. That is just not done in politics, Hank. There's no way I'm going back to college. I'm a teacher. I'm done learning. Can you believe that woman? I'm real sorry what happened to you, Shug. But the important thing is to keep the after-school program alive, right? The what? Oh, yeah, of course. For the children. But can we really trust men to deliver? 
I mean, come on, this is a woman who makes dumb blonde jokes behind your back. Men makes dumb blonde jokes behind my back? Hey, don't drag me into your little cat fight. I just came over to save the after-school program. Oh, that witch. Here's what I'm thinking. We dig up some dirt on men, and you do an expose on the local news. Then, after her support is totally gone, I jump into the race and give that freaking dog the beating of her life! Well, I don't know. That kind of reporting isn't really my arena. Nancy, how much longer do you think you can milk this sexy weather girl act? Two, three, two years tops? This is your chance to be taken seriously. Get on the air and deliver the biggest news flash of your career. Peggy Hill is running for school board. Well, I do want to be taken seriously, and I have some ideas. Oh, you... honey, I'm sure you do. It's just that no one ever listens to me. Okay, okay. And we have to think constructively and not get emotional about this. Now, how do we destroy men? Oh, there she is. Smile and wave. Smile and wave. <gasps> I bury you. <laughs> What are they saying, Dale? Con is asking men to pass the potatoes. Oh, come on. I need something juicier than that. I tried to slip in their house as a paper boy, but Mr. Supanusum phone recognized me. But I grabbed their garbage. Huh. Look who's too good to hang on to a sizzler coupon. What do we have here? Come to Mama. That cold front looks like it wants to stay put right through the weekend. So while there might be a spring in your step, there's none in the forecast. Muy bien, Nancy. Just how much fun is a barrel of monkeys? Well, two radio DJs. And Miguel, here's some advice on the upcoming school board election. I'd think again if you're planning on voting for men's soup and noose and phone. I don't think these are the kinds of pay-per-view programs that a friend of the children should be watching. I told you, mean, but no. You just had to see hobos boxing. Oh, yeah. Fortunately, there is an alternative. I know someone who'd be perfect for the job. She's a dedicated parent. She's smart. And she's more than just a pretty face. She's me. Nancy Hicks Gribble. Pick Hicks. What? And if elected, I promise oh, well. to turn Arlen School to... Wait! I'm running to... Peggy Hill for school board! Hey, ow, ow, ow. Will you let these are my people? They want to hear me speak! Arlen! <laughs> Peggy, do I have these in the right order? You better. Here comes someone. Big smile. Oh, it's only Con. Ow, ow, ow! <laughs> Go to hell! Phase two complete! Van rented, ready to pick up constituents and sweep election! Phase three, ha! A victory dance! Ah! Oh, hello! You rent minivan? What you thinking? Minivan seats seven people. I need 15 to swing election. How much Peggy Hill paying you to be jackass? Something's wrong with the bug. I can't hear a thing. But I see they have a new van. I bet they're using it to bust their constituents to the polling place. Well, we'll outvan them. But we'll keep ours in the garage. They'll never see it coming. Idiots. <laughs> Why isn't this working? I rewired it myself. You better get out of here, Gribble. I am this close to kicking your ass. No one threatens me. I'm this close to kicking your ass. Oh, yeah? Well, now I'm this close to kicking your ass. Let's settle this like men. Hank, whose fingers are closer? Whoa, whoa. Just because our wives are at each other's throats doesn't mean we have to be. Oh, easy for you to say. Your wife a loser. And now, now, Con, maybe Hank's right. I say we let bygones be... Yeah! Ah! Sneak attack! I win! Ah! I'm so hungry and tired, I messed up the last 50 buttons. Bobby's out. Hank's in. Fine. When are we having dinner? It's 9.15. Ugh, fine. Here's $10. Go. Oh. All right, go to the 
Joseph, stop the sign! So, they have a van. Okay, Hank. Min has her support here. I'll concede little Laos to her. Nancy's support is, well, she's been blathering about all the dogs named after her in this trailer park. Which leaves all of this for me. Hank, we're gonna need a bus. We're not spending money to rent a bus. It's for the freaking children! <laughs> Hank, the phone poll numbers are not good. The projections show Nancy with four votes, Min also with four votes, and Peggy Hill, zero. Now, I could increase my margin of error to five votes, but even then, I am just winning by the skin of my teeth. Well, when people see that flyer you put in the penny saver... That doesn't come out until after Election Day. Now, I need to motivate my base, the hardcore constituents who would fight and die for me. Hank, you have to make me a base. Call your customers. Uh, I don't really think I should mix politics and propane. People's passions run pretty high about both those. Hank, I cannot allow myself to be beaten by Nancy or men. I could never show my face in this neighborhood again. I know, but with your numbers being zero and all, maybe you should just prepare a concession speech. What? You want me to concede to those two? Hank, you're out. Peggy, you're in. I'm no weather bimbo, but forecast looking cloudy for you to win. Just because I'm beautiful doesn't mean I'm harmless, Shug. Have you ever wondered what happened to the weathercaster before me? It's the voting ban. Yes, the voting ban is here. It's the voting ban to take you to the polling place. So let's all get on the van right now and vote for Nancy Hicks, scribble for school board. Hey there, friend. Yeah. Oh, uh, I'm here for the voters. Voting truck already done come and took them. But, but I'm the one who was supposed to have done come and took them. Hang on there, mister. I want to talk to you about that fancy hat you got on your head there. Uh, but I don't want to talk about my fancy hat. Here. Somebody! Damn, Nancy. Hey, driver. When are we getting to the polls? Never. believe we lost that Chapman loony. Yeah. Not only that, it say there she's getting rid of after-school program. And biology. And all offensive encyclopedias, whatever that means. I guess we kind of burnt the toast on this one. <sighs> hey, she only got 18 votes? I hijacked twice as many of your voters on my bus yesterday. We could have crushed her. Yeah, into fine powder. Ow, my eye! Cool. Maybe we should spend some time with the kids today. We could be their after-school program. Maybe we take them to a museum. Or the zoo, which is a museum of animals. Mm, something smells good. It's the menu. Ha! <laughs> Even the menu smells good at rattlesnakes. Luann, Luann, what did I tell you about... Hey, Peggy, if I get the chicken fried chicken and you get the chicken fried steak, we can... Just a moment. There is something that I must take care of. I do so know enough not to put a salad-sized fork in the spoon bin. Well, that fork didn't just walk along and hop in there by herself, did she now? No, she couldn't have... Excuse me, ma'am. Why are you calling my niece a liar? 
Luann knows we have a way of doing things here at Rattlesnakes. She also knows the consequences of not following that way. You will not use threats with her. And you will not tell me how to talk to my supervisees. And you have just lost yourself a waitress. She quits. Well, now, wait a minute. I wasn't going to fire her. Mm -hmm. It's too late for your apologies now, isn't it? Luann, pick up your clothes and three onion loaves. We are going home. <sighs> We wouldn't have lost my rattlesnakes job if you hadn't said anything. Exactly, but I won't be around forever to do everything for you. You have to learn to help yourself. How did it help me to lose my job? It will leave you open for new opportunities, such as the one that I am about to present to you. The Learning Annex is offering a class on the joy of entrepreneuring. I signed you up. It would be really nice if sometimes you could ask me when you make decisions about my life. You're right. Would you like to go at seven or at nine? Mm, seven. I'm sorry, that won't work for me. A lot of you think of Trip Larson as the Hog King of Ireland, but he wasn't born with that crown on his head. He's an entrepreneur, an innovator, and an inventor responsible for edibilizing two new parts of the pig. Thank you, thank you. My great-grandfather started Larson pork products with little more than three pigs and a killing hammer. Today, I'm proud to say, we kill more pigs than, well, pig hepatitis. There's no secret to success, really. You have to have a passion for whatever you do, whether it's processing pigs or sheep or cattle into food and food products. What's a food product? It's like food, but cheaper. Young lady? You had a question? Well, I... Yes. I find that I am too busy succeeding to keep track of all of my ideas. So, I keep them in a file. Well, actually, that's more of a comment than a question. Well, thank you. I think so, too. Well, hello. How'd you like my lecture? Did you enjoy it? I mean, did you enjoy it as much as I enjoyed having you at my lecture? I really like the part where you were excited about what you do. That's what I'm trying to find. A career I'm passionate about. Like waitressing at a steakhouse. Oh. You know, you have that special, I don't know, unspoiled quality. And something tells me I think you'd do pretty darn well in pork. How'd you like to interview for a position with Larson Pork Products? Well... I did work with pork chops in my last job. Well, but to be honest, sometimes I dropped a couple. Well, see, that's the beauty of pork. It rinses off clean. Ice cream? Hey, what are you celebrating? Trip Larson has scheduled an interview with Luann. I get to go to his house. I don't see why he has to see her at his house. You think he could be interested in something more than an interview? The pork industry is famously informal. That's how these things are done. Uh, Luann, sometimes men aren't interested in what they say they're interested in. To put it bluntly, they're more interested in something else. Oh, you mean sex. Uh, no, no, no. Yes. For my interview, Mr. Larson? I am also here for her interview. Luann, let's go ballooning. Peggy, why don't you read my autobiography? Oh, it's all so beautiful. You can see for miles. Yeah, 3.7 miles. You can see up to around 8 miles if you try this monocular. It's Austrian. They make the best monocular. Something wrong? It's just that, um, well, you know so much and I know so little. I hope that doesn't make you think I'm stupid. You are not stupid. You're ignorant. What? No, you can't tell... It's a compliment. That just means you haven't had the chance to learn all the wrong things. Oh. No one's ever told me that before. Well, maybe that's because no one has ever realized how ignorant you truly are. What are you doing? That is not a proper way to interview! <sighs> I 
Whose house are we gonna be TPing this year? Probably mine again. So how'd it go? Mr. Chip Larson is the most wonderful man in the whole world. <laughs> well, he gave you a job, huh? What position? Oh, I'm his girlfriend. <laughs> well, I knew this guy was no good, but braiding your hair? From the back, your head looks like a horse's ass. Well, Trip likes my hair in braids. He says they make me look smart. Luann, honey, it's not that we don't like your hair in braids, which we don't. It's that we don't like Trip. He's old enough to be your father, and he's treating you like a child. Stop worrying, Aunt Peggy. I'm going to eat my salad after my steak. Trip says that's the French way. So I can have my dessert first, then my steak, and then, if I have room, my salad. Salad after steak? I hate to say this twice in one meal, but horse's ass. Hello. We were in the neighborhood and thought you might like some of my brown Betty. We can also discuss my Luann. Hey, that's a good idea. Sounds fun. How'd you like to watch some football bloopers while I finish my set? You know, they send us advertisers some stuff that, well, you'll see it nowhere else. I could take a look. Hank, remember what we're here for. But this is private bloopers. Hey, do you have the snowman who caught fire at the Vikings game? Do I? Ha I've got three different snowmen catching fire. There he goes. How's it going? Did Blanca set you up all right? I would like to talk about Luann before we have to make a blooper reel out of her life. Well, we just want to make sure Luann isn't getting into any trouble. She is our only niece. Hank. Luann is lucky to have somebody like you looking out for her. Will you look at that? <laughs> yeah, that's the J5. It's a little project I've been working on for quite some time now. In terms of timed processing weight, meat yield, weanability, she's pretty much the perfect pig. Mmm, looks like you could eat it with a spoon. Just give me five years and you will. Oh. Just like a baby. Look at her, Peggy. Remind you of someone when he was little? Hank, how would you like to ride in a hot air balloon? Hey, I don't have to tell you it's powered by propane. Well, that's one of the eight uses of propane I haven't experienced firsthand. Oh, dear Lord. Peggy, I feel like Neil Armstrong up here. I can see everybody's gutters, and they look great. Mrs. Hill, I'm a guy who makes his own rules. You play by them, everybody wins. Try to call your own game. Not so terrific. Whoa! Well, let me tell you something. You might be rich, but all the money in the world cannot buy you the most precious gift of all. My respect! The man willfully endangered your life just to make a point, Hank. Try to see it from his point of view. He was trying to control the balloon and you kept talking to him. I was right there. He was pulling and yanking that cord and trying to jerk you out of there with every last fiber of his being and then some. Aunt Peggy, Chip believes that no one ever solved anything with a run-on sentence. What? How dare you? You do not come into my house and correct my grammar unless your name happens to be Strunk or what, is it? I'm just trying to help you improve yourself, Aunt Peggy. Mmm, this will cook up nice, Hank. How much did it cost you, huh? A, a hundred bucks? Hank, the man is crazy. That headless pig is a threat. No, it's a gift. From Trip Larson. And it's to you. <laughs> I guess somebody owes Trip an apology. There is a large dead animal on my lawn. Look, let's be reasonable about this. I work in propane, so I give away propane. Trip Larson works with pork. So that's why he gave us this fella here. Uh, uh, no, you're bruising the rinds. That's it. Luann, I have decided that your boyfriend is crazy. Now, do you want to break up with him or should I? Now just stop it. Stop telling me what to do. I am a proud 
ignorant woman, and no one is going to change that. Now that is the stupidest thing I ever heard anyone say. <laughs> <laughs> you wiped your eyes on my tie. That's okay. It's an amazing fabric. Thanks, Trip. I feel better. I'm going to go home now and think of something mean to do to Aunt Peggy, okay? Luann, you are home. I took the liberty of having your belongings meat trucked out here. Forgive me if they smell delicious. Luann, dear, this will be your room. <gasps> it's so beautiful. Oh, I don't see any of my clothes. Well, that's because I had them shredded. Plant mulch. Gardening tip. Synthetics make wonderful ground cover. But, no, see, I need stuff to wear to dinner. Not a problem. Oh! <gasps> oh, mm. They're all the same. Nothing is exactly the same. Everything has a small flaw or imperfection. Drives me mad. <gasps> Trip! Trip, is that you? Trip, are you there? Why is there a pig in the house? Oh, don't tell me you're jealous. I might have grown up poor, but I never knew anyone who kept a pig in the house. Well, that's because they weren't equipped for it. The floor in there is Brazilian rosewood, super hard, super high quality stuff. And I had it finished with four coats of polyurethane. Not that it needs it. The J5's hooves are soft as bedroom slippers. Shut up! Go back to bed, honey. I'll have Blanca bring you up a warm glass of milk, okay? Okay. Finish it all. Oh, good, you're up. My, my head is bleeding. Your head hasn't been harmed. It's been improved. I took the liberty of dying it while you were asleep these last 14 hours. But, well, why? I don't want red hair. You don't like it? Okay. Well, we can always shave it off and wait for it to regrow. No! Good. Then it's settled. Blanca, um, I'm going all the way downstairs to practice my harp like Mr. Larson wanted me to. Except for the teeth, but that can be taken care of. Are you trying to turn me into her? This is the Larson Pork Products girl my grandfather created 50 years ago. Her picture graced the walls of my nursery. Mother never really paid me much attention, but she was always there. I'm very sorry about your mother, and now I'm going home. Please don't go. I've spent so many years trying to find you. Look at her. The Larson Pork Products woman is as comfortable dining with kings as she is slaughtering pigs. I never thought I'd meet someone as perfect as the woman in that picture. And then I saw you at the Learning Annex. I guess. Uh, I'm just so alone here. I get scared. I understand. And I mean to fix all that. With a big Halloween party to show the world just how happy we are. Can I dress up as a pirate? A woman is a pirate? Well, that's just crazy. 
I know just what you wear. This. Hey, it's an invitation. Larson Pork Products and the Dance Theater of Arlen invite you to a Halloween gala. Sounds like a blast. Well, I know Luann doesn't want to see me, but I am a silver slipper donor to the Dance Theater of Arlen, and those people still owe me an umbrella. Oh, great. It's Luann. I'll bet she can tell us where the bathroom is. Is that all you care about? The bathroom? What about Luann? I can't enjoy a party until I know where the bathroom is. You knew that when you married me. Hi, Aunt Peggy. Uncle Hank. I'm really glad you could come. You look nice, Luann. I know. Chip told me. I'm the Larson Pork Products girl. You see, Peggy, I could have come as the Strickland propane guy instead of renting this getup. Mister is ready for you now. Oh, <laughs> this is Blanca. She's my best friend here. I'm here, dearest. Huh? Luann, you've never looked more beautiful. And I've never felt more alive. I never thought this day would come when I would have everything I've ever wanted within my grasp. <gasps> Is that an engagement ring? Wait, Luann. I want everything to be perfect. Luann, will you do me the great honor of marrying him? Him? Javier? The time has come. <gasps> That's the man in the ad! Life is a series of compromises. Chip, I'm kind of confused. What is happening here? Don't you see? We can have it all. We can be the family in the picture. You, him, and me. <laughs> what? What? You <laughs> wait! wait. Where did Luann go? That's for me to know and you to find out. And me to find out too because I don't know. Luann! Luann! Luann, wait! I can explain everything! No! You're sick! I'm calling the police! Luann, you're not thinking clearly. I'm here, Luann! I'll take care of everything! Now we can become Larson Pork Products together! Ah! 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 Well, trust me, this is for the best! We agreed that I would do the thing for both of us! I never agreed to be a Larson Pork Product! Well, I thought you loved me! No! Trap! <gasps> Move the left lever. Now. Let me do it. <laughs> Mama. Papa. I'm coming home. Oh. Oh. oh, my God. I can suddenly think clearly. The voices have left my head. What am I doing on a pig costume? Uh-oh. Well, at least Trip seemed happy. And now he's in a better place. Honey, 
Tripp had a mental breakdown and is now a sausage. That's not a better place. But you handled the situation very well. I did, didn't I? You saved yourself by thinking for yourself. I did, didn't I? You are your own woman. I am? I am! So really, it's a happy ending. Happy enough. Hill, what are you doing? I'm ironing underwater. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Don't test me, young man. I failed funnier kids than you. All right, children, irons down. With the help of Ernie the janitor, I have soiled each of these cheerleader uniforms. Your take-home exam is to identify and remove the mystery stain. And here's one for our class clown. Oh, wait, let me give you some extra credit. If it's Monday night, it must be Frito Pie with Wolf Brand Chili. I made it just the way you like it. Perfect. Come on, Bobby. It's Frito Pie with Wolf Brand Chili night. What the... There better be a naked cheerleader under your bed. Don't get mad, but I think I'm gonna fail home ec. Well, of course you're failing home ec. You're a guy. Did you know your son is taking home ec? They got him playing with skirts. If Bobby learns to cook and clean for himself, what's his motivation to ever get married? Home Eck is not going to turn Bobby into a sissy. In prison movies, the toughest characters always work in the kitchen. I wouldn't worry, Hank. When I was the uh, varsity football towel manager, I cleaned 50 jock straps a week. I turned out okay. <sighs> Man, nice shot, man. It don't nothing but ice, no. Oh, please. When I was the, uh, varsity football towel manager, I once slang shot a jock strap into a laundry hamper from 50 yards away. Bet you a million dollars you can't do that again. You're on. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No! Ha! You choked. You owe me a million dollars, choker. <laughs> choker. Dad says that men install washing machines. They service washing machines, but they aren't supposed to use washing machines. Oh, please. There's no rule that says only women can do housework and only men can have careers. I can do both. I am what the magazines call a superwoman. I like superwoman. Oh, Bobby, thank you. Now, let's take a look at your homework. When we're done with it, this stain is going to wish it was still some cheerleader's lunch. First, you blindside it with press soak. Then, you sucker punch it with some hot water. And just when it's begging for mercy, you rip off its head and pour bleach down its neck. Finish it off, Bobby. Are you gonna let that stain call you a sissy? No! I know it's not even Thanksgiving yet, but it feels like Christmas morning. Oh. Well, it's full of holes, but you did get the stains out. Mostly. <gasps> Uh-oh. Bobby, these are your father's dungarees. How could you, Peggy? Now what am I going to carve the turkey in? My underwear? Not with an electric knife, no, sir. Even world-famous surgeons do not get it right 100% of the time. They make mistakes, Hank. People die. We're human. <sighs> Ms. Bittner, I'm not gonna lie to you. I don't think I heard one thing you've said all year. Especially whatever you said about bleach. Can you help me fix my dad's pants? He can't wear one of your clever jokes? Please, Ms. Bittner, I've never asked for anything from you. 
except more sugar. Ooh, fancy. Hey, Hank, how's it going at the bank? How the hell should I know? On a related fiscal note, Bill, where's the million bucks you owe me? All right, Dale, yeah. Suitable for framing. There you go. One million dollars. I guess I'll have to sell my private island in the South Pacific, huh? <laughs> you never go anyway. Dad, would you like to wear jeans to work today? You know I would. Look what I got! I got a bolt of denim for Miss Bittner. I used your old jeans as a pattern, and I fired up Mom's sewing machine. My sewing machine? <laughs> no, it can't make seams this straight. Well, I guess it wouldn't hurt to try them on. Well, all right, Bobby. They're perfect. I mean, they're a little stiff, but after I break them in for a couple years, they'll be perfect. Hang on. I picked up a little trick in home ec. I hope you don't mind. I borrowed your power sander. <laughs> Peggy, he's right. I can feel the denim loosening up. I'm glad you ruined my jeans. Bobby's made them even better. <laughs> Bobby, eight hours and no chafing. I know what I'm leading off with in my Thanksgiving prayer. <sighs> Three, two, one, mark. Buns in the oven. Oh, then you're not just sewing in home ec. They've got you cooking too, huh? I hope you don't mind, but I opened a bottle of your wedding wine to marinate my pot roast. Well, just make sure when you're done playing, your mother has her kitchen back. It's Tuesday night pork chops, you know. Yes, Bobby, I can handle the heat. So get out of my kitchen, because with pork, the slightest mistake could kill us all. <laughs> I'd like to cash this for cash. A thousand thousands will be fine. Most of the million dollar checks we see are jokes. Your job sounds fun. I'm sorry, Mr. Dotterive only has $418.75. Okay, then give me 400 Sacagawea coins, 18 Susan B. Anthony's, two North Carolina quarters, and a Utah. Yep. Tastes like Tuesday. Thank you, Hank. Say, that smells pretty good. Thanks, Dad. Could you sign this form saying I cooked it myself and that it tasted okay? Yeah, I'll help you with your homework. Hank, you will spoil your appetite. Hmm. No, no, it's okay. Let's eat Bobby's pot roast now while it's still juicy. Your pork chops will be just as good tomorrow. No, no, no. Wednesday is Spa Peggy and Meatballs Day. You can't have pork chops on Wednesday. That would throw off the whole rotation. <laughs> Wednesday. You would not have believed it, Nancy. He ate that pot roast like, like it was my pork chops. And my pork chops were sitting right there. What you need, Shug, is an unfair advantage. It's the library, so try not to get anything on it. A homemaking magazine? Oh, no, no thank you. I have never needed to. Well, that is the most beautiful Thanksgiving centerpiece I have ever seen. Hey, Peggy. Uh, why is the table covered with yard waste? Hank, it is not yard waste. Or it will not be when I get through with it. It will be our new stunning Thanksgiving centerpiece. Made entirely of yard waste. Ooh, don't touch it, Bobby. Those nests could be full of fleas and ticks. Not if you take the birds out. They'll build another nest. They're not just going to let their eggs sit there on the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, Ernst is done removing the parasites, but he cannot comb out the dark sadness that entangles you. What's up with that? 
Ernst, imagine if the man you love found someone else to cook for him and clean for him and make his pants. Who is this other woman? The other woman is my son. Yeah, he may be getting an A in home ec, but at what cost, huh? At what cost to me? Cooking, cleaning, or sewing. I did not hear you mention the boudoir. I can think of many things to be done there for Hunk. Well, I am an excellent lover. And Ernst is an excellent hairstylist. Together, let us take your husband places from our wildest dreams. Sorry, sir, but you have more food than money. Okay, now I don't need cling wrap. This is my whole Thanksgiving dinner, and who am I kidding? There aren't going to be any leftovers. <laughs> um, you're still over? Oh. But, but, you can't take my turkey. <sighs> still over. Mm. This circular saw cozy fits great, son, but can we call it something else? Hey, how about a circular saw buddy? You name it, and I'll knit it. Hey, Peggy, Bobby made me a circular saw buddy. Whoa, your hair looks great. It's so big. Well, I hope it's not too tall to get through the bedroom door, Hank. Well, the doorway's got a seven-foot clearance. Dinner! Dinner? When it got to be five o'clock and you weren't home, I asked Bobby to whip something up. Well, that's a good idea. The sooner we eat, the sooner we can get to dessert. <sighs> I think Bobby made pie. Ugh, I probably should have stopped at seconds. I'm not usually a big fan of cheese, but boy, the things Bobby does with it. I have an idea how we can burn off some calories, Hank. Ugh. What's wrong? I is Bobby's cooking coming up on you? Ugh, I think it's all that beauty stuff in your hair. It kind of has that new car smell. Mm. <sighs> boy, that cheese. Mmm. Is going on. <coughs> the fumes coming off your hair keep waking me up. You don't smell like a new car. I just said that to make you feel better. Bobby, put away your robot and go to bed. I need the couch. Your father's feeling ill. I think it was something he ate. Why don't you just take my bed? I've got a lot of work to do out here. Ugh. Was this ever an outdoor couch? Okay, fine. I will sleep in your bed, right under your booger wall. I thought I heard an upholstery shampooer. Maybe you could use that thing to get the smell out of your mother's side of the bed. Have you seen her? She was looking for a place to sleep, so I let her have my bed. Oh, well, where are you going to sleep? I'll just crash on the couch. It's still a little wet, but it gives me an excuse to sleep in my poncho. No, no, your mother's bed is empty. Why don't you just bunk with me in the big bedroom? I'll make caramel popcorn. I'll turn on the TV. It's such a clear night, we might be able to pick up the news from San Antonio. Their sports guy played for the Oilers for a year. All right. I didn't know your bed was made of two little beds. Well, your mother likes her mattress firm, and I like mine extra firm. So I guess it's true. Opposites attract. Check it out. The weather girl is looking at the wrong camera. <laughs> San Antonio. And it's gonna rain tomorrow. <laughs> Why would anyone live there? You know who'd get a kick out of this? Ladybird. Come here, girl.
Miss Piggy Balloon has the same hairdo as your mother. Hey, Peggy. <laughs> well, maybe for you it is. Oh, I was expecting you to say good morning. So, did you sleep well? Not really. Bobby and I were up all night talking. Really, really talking. what I found in Bobby's bed. Mm -hmm. It's a ladies magazine, and that is not my opinion. It says so right in the title. You were right about home ec, Hank. It's ruining Bobby. Every perfume ad has been scratched and sniffed, and his horoscope says that this is a good week for him to meet the man of his dreams. If you ask me, Hank, that boy ain't right. Bobby, get in here, now. What's up, Dad? Son? Do you think you could make this buttermilk-basted turkey? Well, that recipe takes 24 hours. Good thing I started on it last night. <laughs> I just thought you were getting up to use the bathroom a lot. You know what? Let's have Bobby handle the whole meal. What? But, but every year I... This year, the only thing you have to do is get hungry. Just... Kick back on the couch, now that it's fit to sit on. <laughs> oh, Dad, where's the turkey platter? I want to start on the radish roses. It's in the garage in a box marked Winter Holiday Poultry Serving Dishes. Here, I'll help you find it. Mom, you mind popping my bird in? Don't worry, the racks are set and the oven's already preheated. It's idiot-proof. Mm. They do not deserve us. Oh, boxed in. Did I fix my roof in the last few days? Well, it still looks pretty bad, so maybe. Why? And I can't buy any Thanksgiving food because my bank account is empty and... And I can't remember what I spent it on. It's empty because I cashed your check, Bill, which did not clear for the full million dollars. But that check was a joke. Just like the bet, it was a joke. I laughed. We had a legitimate oral contract entered into fully and freely when I said, betcha, and you said, and I quote, you're on. Dale, stop talking like a lawyer and give Bill his money back. What's the point? Bill would probably just go and spend it on something stupid, like himself. My haircut was a success. Your Hank, he ravaged you last night, yes? Tell me, what did you do to him? I stole his turkey is what I did. I would rather share it with a man who needs me. A man who is also alone on Thanksgiving because of the stigma society attaches to his unconventional sexual appetites. Get in here, you drama queen. Tell me, tell me, who is this mystery man? Who the hell is she? Peggy Hill, this is my wife, Claudia, and my little angel, Brad. You have a family that loves you? <laughs> Hank Hill, happy Thanksgiving. Hank, this is Ernst. I hope you're sitting down for the bombshell I am about to drop. Last chance to sit. Is this about the smell in Peggy's hair? This is not about some smell that you are imagining. Peggy is here with your turkey. 
They are both bruised and broken. Son of a gun. Your mother took the turkey and ran off to her hairdressers. You have made her feel useless in her own house. Now she is in my house, laying face down in a puddle of her own self-esteem. Pull her out before she drowns. Now, Hank, now. I breastfed my Bobby. Big mistake. <sighs> Bobby, I need you to do two things I pray you'll never have to do again. Tape the Cowboys game and give me an apron. Goodbye, honey. Good luck. Hello, Peggy. I'm sorry I'm so underdressed, Hank. I see you and Bobby decided to go formal. No, I sent Bobby to the neighbors. But first, we whipped up some of our favorite dishes. Happy Thanksgiving. Fried pork chops, frito pie with wolf brand chili, spa Peggy with meatballs. And a half a bottle of our wedding wine. You don't even need me to make spa Peggy? Nope, I guess not. But that's okay. I didn't marry you because I need someone to cook and clean for me. I married you because, you know, you know, the love. Oh, hi. Hmm, your hair smells much better now, like stuffing. Bobby, this is the best Thanksgiving dinner I ever had. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Let, let's do the wishbone. This is for a million dollars. <laughs> okay. Ah, I won! I won! You owe me a million dollars! Correction, you owe me a million dollars. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Bobby. He made me do it. He, he was all a setup. <laughs> <sighs> Boy, that cheese. Mm. Q bag. Q bod. Oh man, it's like that damn magmo. I'm not even gonna give this animal the satisfaction of trying to read it. That's just what he wants. One day you're living in paradise, next day it's a crime ridden slum. Society's going to hell in a handbasket. I blame the media blamers. And one more thing, people, K107 is sponsoring this year's science fair, which will now be known as Rock the Science. The winner gets to present their findings to Easy Ed and the Chicken Boy. Dude, you want to be my partner for the science fair? I found a dead bird in my backyard we could probably do something with. Thanks, Joseph, but I'd like to increase my chances of winning and decrease my chances of working. Hey, Connie, want to be my science partner? That'd be great. I've got about 50 awesome ideas. <laughs> 57 if we're allowed to use radium. I'll email them to you tonight. Why are you trying to get back together with her? What? I'm not. It's just a science project. It's not like we're in a play together. Dude, she might be thinking something else. When she walked out of that room, she looked back at you. I think you've been reading too many of your dad's romance novels. Why else would the smartest girl in class want to work with you? You made sun tea for last year's science project. Uh-oh. Damn vandal. This will probably take us hours between the joking around and the horseplay. And the beer runs. Look, we're all upset, but this guy hasn't licked me yet. This is gonna be cool. Here we go. This is the best yeah. day ever. Yeah. Yeah. Now it's fast. You missed a spot. I did? No, man, it just like that old shadow me. I got a let her down easy. Normally, I'd start with a joke, but that's how she fell for me in the first place. You know who might soften the blow? Tell her I've always been into her. And that I always stare at her not because I'm creepy, but because I'm deep. I'll do what I can. Hey, partner! Honey? Oh. Oh. Whoa. I knew you 
weren't wearing slutty lipstick. Huh? I just got flipped by this girl who looked kind of like you, but she was dressed like a teenager. Ugh, that's Tid Pal, my cousin from L.A. She's sleeping in my room. L.A.? She was so in my face, I thought New York, but L.A. is even better. Hey, ain't you the fat kid who jumped me? Yes, yes I am, Bobby Hill. So, Tid Pal, how long are you gonna be here on the third coast? Till I ain't. She's here for the rest of the semester. Not that anyone asked me. And while you're here, stop attacking people. This isn't L.A. where anything goes, where it's cool to take me to Knott's Berry Farm and totally ditch me. Whoa, sorry, I didn't know I was smacking down your boyfriend. A uh, boyfriend? <laughs> uh, I'm not. We're just science partners. Nothing more. Peace. Catch you later. Catch you later still a cool phrase, isn't it? I mean, have you ever used it? No. Okay. Hey everybody, we have a new student, Tid Pow. Now, I know there are a number of ways we can make fun of her name, like Kung Pow, or I suppose Tid Poo, so let's have none of that. So, do you enjoy exploring the mysterious world of science? Do you? Uh, yes. Did you see how she turned it around on him? Okay, Tid Pow will need a partner for the science fair. I assume Joseph is available. I don't want Tid Pow. I want Connie. You want Tid Pow. That whole family is hot. We could do something with photosynthesis, but that's not very sexy. And of course, mitochondrial cell swapping has been done to death. Connie, I think we should switch partners. What? You asked me to be your partner and now you're blowing me off? Great. Fine. You and Joseph have fun. So what's it going to be? Paper airplanes? How a rock works? Actually, uh, I want to work with Tid Pal. But she's just a stuck-up wise-ass who wears too much makeup. And the real reason her parents made her leave L.A. is because her grades are slipping. That's right. Slipping. So she's not book smart. She gets an A in cool. Hi, science partner. You want to see my dead bird? Uh, man, I hate it here. I just want to come home. Too soon, Q-Bag. Know what I'm saying? The Alvera Street Queen's still going off about that kilo you stole. Yo, just stay away, yo. Yeah, maybe I should give back what I took from them. <laughs> Where are you going to cop that much meth? You don't know any dealers down there. I guess I'll have to cook it up myself. I just gotta get a hold of the equipment. You better be careful, girl. People probably got their eye on you. No sweat. I can con one of these inbred hicks to do my dirty work for me. Hi. Hold on. Yo, Cleo, that hot dude from next door is here. Call you back. Will you be my science fair partner? Science partners, huh? Sounds cool. All right! I mean, sub. See, I was right. It's Q bag. There's the Q in that clearly bag. Gentlemen, I believe I've solved our graffiti problem. We build a protective razor wire top fence around our existing fence. <sighs> Dang it, Dale. That's genius. Indeed. I will use a salami to simulate what this stuff will do to a vandal's arm. Hmm. We need a real arm. Bill? Hey, Tid Pal. I've been, uh, <clears throat> jamming on some science fair ideas. I've got some notions involving goggles and some kind of beaker. Why don't we get together tonight for a brainstorming session? See where it takes us. Don't worry about it. I already got an idea. Awesome. I'll pick you up at seven. Luann, you're the hippest person I know. I need to take Tid Pow someplace that's not boring. You know, sophisticated, but close enough that I can ride my bike. Okay. Um, you know it's exciting? That place where you bet on which chicken is madder. 
I could not help overhearing, and I cannot help making some suggestions. Here's what to do. The Pioneer Women's Museum. Mom, I'm looking for cool, not lame. Lame? Well, maybe, if you think it's lame to spend an evening with costumes and artifacts used by our foremothers. I bet you thought we were too hick to have sushi in Arlen. And a year ago, you would have been right. Salmon's almost defrosted, so it'll be just a sec. Your fries are ready, though. Yo, man, this tuna's from a can. That's how I got it, Carl. Maybe we should go roller skating. My mother clipped a coupon for me. Um... Oh, no! They're after us! This is crap, isn't it? Crappiest. Ooh, I don't think you're supposed to touch the women. Got bugs? <laughs> I think the cow wants to milk Grandma. <laughs> You know what we should do for our project? Find out how boys like Bobby could possibly be interested in some street trash like Tid Pal. You know, if you're tired, you could crash here. Oh, Joseph, I really don't want to get into this again. Joseph, Joseph, don't forget to do the yawn and stretch. <sighs> Huh? Hey, check this out. You're the one doing that? My dad keeps having to sandblast, restain, and lacquer it off. He's the one doing that? You've got to understand. He doesn't even approve of bumper stickers. Yeah, but you're cooler than that, aren't ya? Give me that can. Hmm. <laughs> Check it out, girl. I'm representing. Cue bag. Painterer. You, inside, now. <laughs> Dang it, Bobby. Your mother and I took our wedding photos in front of that fence. Man, I'm just keeping it real, dog. <laughs> You'd never make it in L.A. I hope I never make it to L.A. I could make it in L.A. I just have very fair skin. My dermatologist says it would be a death sentence. What's that? I'm sorry, Mom. I, I couldn't hear you over the crickets and banjos. Mister, if you think you're in a small town now, you're about to be mayor of your room for a few months. I tell you what, and stay away from that Tid Pow. Don't think I can't tell the difference between her and Connie, because I can. I swear to your father, I keep you out of trouble. And now you get mixed up with Bobby Hill. What is it with you beautiful Asian girls and that stupid redneck boy? Why so self-destructive? Low self-esteem? Uh, long distance. You use calling card? Of course not. Yo. Yeah, the stuff will be ready by next week. I just gotta sell it, then book it back to Cali. I'll bring you a little extra for your birthday. Oh. Clear your calendars, open cockpit biplane fans. This weekend is the dedication of Arlen Airfield's new windsock. <sighs> Yo, Tid Pow, my dad said I couldn't see you, and I just said, chill, Hank. You don't tell me what... Close the door! Oh, crap! Did my dad see me? Whoa, my dad said that you're a bad influence, and here you got half our science fair project done. What are we making? It's a... a candy machine. All right! Hard candy, chewy candy, sticky candy, gummy candy? Just candy. Interesting. Interesting. So what's the feeling? Caramel, nougat, nuts, jelly? You ready to help me? Anything, partner. Yo, your dad works at a propane place, right? Yeah, I'm gonna need like four tanks. Uh, I don't know. As soon as I ask him, he'll want to know what it's for, and when your name comes up, no go. Then don't ask him. But... Mm. Sometimes.
Sometimes I overthink. <sighs> Can you believe the sass coming out of his mouth? And now it's on my fence. Oh, come on, Hank. He's just trying to impress a girl. Remember how when we were first dating, you used to run up the down escalators? Well, at least he was using paint. This is your dad's job? This place stinks. Uh, yeah, you think that's bad? You should get a whiff of his overalls. <laughs> Most of his customers pay him in manure. We're gonna need two more tanks. But these were the only little ones outside. So get some from inside. You've already jacked his keychain. What's the biggie? <sighs> Come on, bud. Did you win or not? <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Just gonna grab a soda, fellas. <laughs> Morning, Joe Jack. Morning, Enrique. Morning, darling. Oh, my God. Mr. Strickland, we've been robbed. No, no, no it, it all got spent on coffee yesterday. Honest. What the hell is going on in this town? First kids are spray painting fences. Now someone is stealing propane. I can understand wanting propane so bad you could steal it, but to actually go through with it? What kind of sicko would do that? Well, the propane is under my watch, so it's coming out of my pay. I was thinking maybe we can sell our first batch of candy and use the money to repay my dad. Also, I was thinking we could call them Bobby Ruths. Forget that. I need you to jack us some cough syrup, yo. You know, to finish our project. More stealing? Yeah, we got heavy into that in the sixth grade. It's kind of played out. Now we're into asking our parents for the money and explaining what it's for. <sighs> yeah, that's what's cool now. Come on, Q-Bob. Uh, I got five bucks. We can go buy a bottle of children's cherry. Man, you are so weak. I'll meet you here before the science fair. I mean the science fizz air. Check out this machine we made. It picks up radio signals. It's an incubator, Joseph. I had the radio on in my room while I was making it. Then does music just... So, Bobby, where's your cool girlfriend? She'll be here. Don't you worry about that. Mom, the science fair's today. I need some cough syrup. Are you trying to play sick? Because I will have a thermometer in you before you can sit down. No, no. I want to go to school and win that science fair. And when I come home, the only thing I'm putting on Dad's fence is a blue ribbon. Or a chicken boy t-shirt. I don't remember what the prizes were. I'll be honest with you. I'm a little uncomfortable with buying such a large quantity of Zoom from a 13-year-old girl. Please, mister, can I just get the deposit? I'm late for a Girl Scout meeting. Don't you cross me, little girl. Just made my deal. It'll be enough to pay back the Alvera Street Queens and fly back to Cali first class. Your punk ass picking me up at the airport? Aye. Great, thanks. <sighs> this is limit. brought it here? God, you are one dumbass pig farmer. What are you yelling at me for? I'm the one here rocking the science. Now, if you're ready to make some candy, hand me that brake fluid. What's that cop doing here? 
Oh, that's Mike Soto's dad. He's one of the judges. He was a substitute science teacher last year while he was on suspension from the force. Yo, I got two priors. But if you leave, you won't get any credit. It's all yours, man. Fine. More A's for me. Um, I think somebody already did your project. Oh, yeah. It's right over there. The vending machine? That the best dig you got? Maybe you need to invent a trash-talking machine. <laughs> oh, I hope this candy tastes better than it smells. Oh, it's got to. It smells like cat pee. Ammonia? Cough syrup? Drain cleaner? Bobby, you're not making candy. Didn't you watch that MTV special with Andy Dick? You're making... Methamphetamine. You know, crystal meth, ice, crank. Big deal, I made a crank machine. I'll just change the sign to how a crank is made. Now quit blocking me from the judges. It's drugs, Bobby. The kind you go to jail for? Oh, God. I swear I didn't know. She set me up. I'm just a clod-hopping pig farmer who is too dumb to listen. You were so right about her. Yep. Connie, please, think. You gotta help me. Hey, you wanted excitement. You got it. Uh, oh. <sighs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. The compression generated by the air pump can launch the potato with enough force to go through a man's skull at 100 yards. Candy. Oh, Bobby, this is a refreshing change from Emily's Can Mice Swim project. Turns out they can, but not for long. Let me try a piece. No, 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 no. The experiment is a failure. I'll take the F, sir. Oh, it's like rock candy. You know who has a sweet tooth? Officer Soto. Chad? No, you can't. It's bad. It's too sweet. You'll get diarrhea. I sneezed in it. What the heck is wrong with you? It was an accident. Prove it wasn't, yo. I'm the last uncle you got. You'll screw up here. We ship you back to Grandma in Laos. Fatty tuna smells a little funny, but it all smells kind of funny to me. Would you look at us, chilling in a hip new sushi place right here in Arlen. Who needs L.A.? Hmm. So this is chicken tempura, huh? It's pretty good. Mmm. Dry it with the gravy, Hank. It's mmm. Don't mind. God you're here, Bobby. Lori and me are gonna make out in the janitor's closet. Will you be our lookout? No, I can't. Madame Pascal makes you explain why you're tardy in French, but I can only say my name. Dude. Just hurry up. Why aren't you in class? Emily, please don't bust me. I was just... Out of my way, you two. I need some sawdust to clean up some throw-up from a kid. Oh, don't go in there, sir. I'm developing pictures. They're almost set. Ooh. Whoa. I'm calling it in. I guess that's what the law requires. What you gonna do, huh? Huh? I'll tell you what I'm going to do. You're on my hard-hitting expose series to catch a bully. Consider yourself hit hard. <gasps> he caught another one. My affection for Miguel is expanding along with my definition of newsworthy. 
Oh, ever since Miguel started catching bullies, his approval ratings are through the roof. I'm supposed to be Arlen's anchor you trust. Oh, Miguel is just pandering to the lowest common denominator. You have to find out who is below that and aim there. You're right, Shug. Let's go find a worthy cause to shamelessly exploit. You do not have permission to record this conversation. Proceed. It's Carl Moss. I have Joseph in my office. I need a parent to come down and pick him up. What happened? What's wrong with my baby boy? I'm coming! Protect him until I get there! Joseph! Keys! Joseph! Principal Moss? What is it? Who's in trouble? You or Bobby? Oh, good. It's Bobby. All right, I'm on my way. Now, why don't you tell your father what you and Laura are doing in the janitor's closet? We weren't doing anything, and it wasn't even us. I'm not me! There's no way my Joseph did this. He's too young. Smell his hair. It still has new baby smell. Son, you should only agree to be someone's lookout during a time of war. Now tell me why Joseph was in the janitor's closet. He was just, um, selling drugs. <sighs> that was an awful lie, son. Terrible. Can you believe the nerve of Moss saying my innocent Joseph was doing something tawdry with that girl? You know, Dale, maybe it's time you talk to your boy about, uh, relations, you know, that are sexual in nature. Now I remember when I got my birds and bees talk. Well, it was mostly hand gestures. You, you still haven't told me what means, Hank? My boy isn't old enough for that. He's still full of snips and snails and puppy dog tails. He's six feet tall and has a mustache. It's time. Okay, fine. I'll, I'll give him the sex talk. Um, before I do that, I, I have some questions myself. So, just like the daddy penguin protects the egg with his fur... Ah, you know, this is too childish for you. Let's try this. When a daddy tiger really loves a mommy tiger, is this helpful? No. Are we done yet? I miss Lori. All I can think about is her soft voice and her soft arm hairs. Ah, you're too young for all of this. Can't you see this loose girl is forcing herself onto your innocence? You can't say that about her. You don't even know her. And soon you won't either. I forbid you to see Lori ever again. That's so unfair. This is just like that movie Romeo and Juliet when the Jets attack Romeo with their breakdancing to keep him from the girl he loves. You don't love Lori. Love doesn't even exist. It's just a chemical created in the labs of DuPont. It was an accident while they were developing those spatulas that don't melt. You're just crazy. D stop talking. I hate you. Y you hate me? Oh. Maybe I can be the one who figures out what's irritating all those bowels. That'll show me, Gil. Joseph, let's forget all that stuff we fought about. It's Thursday night, and you know what that means. Serial night. Wrong. Serial night extreme. Shishisha. I bought all your favorite cereals to blend into one mega cereal. Brute fiber, cookie holes, Baron Von Crunchberry, Maybe my cereal doesn't want to be blended. Maybe it wants to be eaten by itself and date whoever it wants. Oh, cheer up, Shug. At his age, you can't love your parents and your girlfriend at the same time. It's confusing. Want me to get you some milk? No, I'll just have my cereal with tears. <laughs> Sorry I'm late. You know how when your son hates you, you just want to shop your blues away? <sighs> At least Megalomart still loves me. They approved me for a club card. Oh my gosh, look! Dale, your real name is on this card. B impossible. It's true. <laughs> my God-given name has been etched in plastic. 
They'll forgot he thinks club cards are a way for the government to identify those who value a bargain. Yeah, man, talking about a damn senior moment, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, lighten up, Dale. You're just distracted by Joseph. The other day, I got so worked up by Bobby, I let the gas get so low that the warning light came on. I haven't used my real name since my library card in middle school. And unless someone checks out Super Fudge, my secret is safe. Just don't know how this happened. Yeah, he's chaperoning me to and from school now. It's so embarrassing. Are you talking to Lori again after I told you not to? No! Sorry, Lori, go on. That's it! Phone privileges revoked! Hey! Give it back! <laughs> God, uh, I can't remember the code. Hit the dog! Ah! Ah! My dad almost killed us. That's so embarrassing. I am going crazy. Or is that crazy talk? Either way, there's a crazy element. I need help. Okay, my symptoms include forgetfulness, repeating things, being told I'm crazy. Oh, repeating things. Hello there. Before I can make my diagnosis, I'm going to need more information. Please take our survey. What's wrong with me? Sponsored by Azteca Pharmaceuticals. First question, are you paranoid? Who wants to know? Did you reply, who wants to know? Yes. Great job! You've successfully completed our survey. According to your answers, you have dementia. <gasps> well, I finally figured out why I can't relate to Joseph. It's because I have dementia. Oh, my. I know. Who knows where I caught it or how long I've had it? I'm assuming that's from the dementia. Don't be an idiot, Dale. You're just stressed out about Joseph. You're not crazy, er than usual. I almost killed my son. I'm not supposed to be the one who kills him. The crushing weight of the world is. I'm a danger to my family, Hank, and I know what I have to do to keep them safe. You've been expecting me. Wow, nice duck. High five. Oh, what a realistic pencil holder. High five. Oh, wow, that's a really nice, um... When my son Joseph was a baby, his favorite meal was Play-Doh spaghetti. He ate it with bugs. He called it Spisgetti and Meat Bugs. Well, great. High five. <gasps> Dale, I hate seeing you like this. I always considered you my brother, Dale. And I always considered you my neighbor, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dale, enough is enough. Get your things. We're going home. I'm not going anywhere, Hank. This is where I belong now. Please remember me as a person who once remembered things. Ah, dang it, this is crazy. I've got to do something about this. Excuse me, who's in charge here? <laughs> I am. Are you the doctor here? I'm not a doctor. I'm Mike Patel. I own this particular franchise of Comforting Pines. Franchise? Uh, look, my friend Dale, uh... Wait, is that a certificate from Whataburger? Oh, yeah. I used to own one of those. Swapped it for this place. The flame broiling fad is over. Are you qualified to run this kind of facility? Are you asking if I'm qualified to care? Because the answer is yes. Thankfully, the government doesn't regulate care. Well, either way, what do I need to do to get my friend checked out of here? Sorry, but, uh, only Mr. Gribble can check himself out. And from the looks of his art project, he seems pretty happy. Hey, you know, we're running a special promotion. If you want me to hang on to the big guy for you. Hey, 
Hey, Joseph, come on. The marching band left some tubas unattended. I can't. Lori wants to make out in the gym. She likes it when our kisses echo. Uh. That seems right up your alley. What's wrong? It's all happening so fast. Lori says she wants to go further. What's further? I know. Maybe she wants to go to McMainerberry? Uh, I'm so confused. Uh, dude, relationships are hard. <laughs> Bye, dude. And that will be later tonight on To Catch a Bully. <sighs> this whole Dale situation is just asinine. So he hit a rough patch with Joseph. It's no reason to check yourself into a mental institution. Poor Nancy. First Miguel and now this. And Sunday I'll be visiting the pregnant gorilla at the Arlen Zoo. How about you, Nancy? Any uh, plans? Glad to you asked me, Gail. Four million Americans suffer from dementia. And I personally know number four million and one. My husband. I'm going to spend my weekend raising dementia awareness. Kind of puts Miguel's dog and pony show in perspective, doesn't it? Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo! And a girl, Nancy! Raise that awareness over Miguel's head and smack him with it! Hmm. I wish Dale was here. I miss the two little me's reflected in his sunglasses when he scowls at me. Hey, man, I ain't missing him one dang old bit, man. I don't talk about making no claims without no citations, man. I don't get no one last nerve, boy. Well, I know we have to talk some sense into Dale, but maybe we don't have to do it today. It's nice to not have to face Magnetic North. Ah, <sighs> True North. Hey, someone's breaking into Dale's van. Ugh. Ugh, stop that. Take a knee. You go home, young lady. I don't know what you think you were doing in there, but just cool it. Go play a video game or step on some ants or something. Actually, can I talk to you for a second? I can't talk to my dad because he's gone, and I can't talk to my mom because she's gone. What is it, Joseph? I think Lori wants to go all the way. All the way where? Oh, oh Lord. I'm feeling a lot of pressure from her, and I don't know what to do. Mr. Hell? Dale, you gotta get yourself out of here. Joseph and Lori are thinking about going all the way. He's running wild. He needs his father. But all the way? That's only for married people. And only for a while. I have to have the sex talk with him before he makes a mistake. Hang on, Joseph! Daddy's coming! Hello there, Mr. Gribble. We're having a high-functioning, low-functioning mixer in the rec room. No thanks, Patel. I'm leaving. Oh, you can't just leave. No, no, no. There's protocol and waivers and releases. There's paperwork to keep us busy for days. No time for that. My boy's about to become a man and he must be stopped. Yeah, you can't leave until we establish if you're a threat to others. I'm only a threat to you. <clears throat> Security breach. We got a runner. What? Come on. You fucker. Ah. Hey. Cold like it. No, there's a misunderstanding. Stop. So cold. I can't believe this is happening. I never had to cold blanket someone before. <laughs> this is not like the burger business at all. Dang it, Mr. Patel, just let Dale go. You can't hold him here against his will. Unfortunately, that's what I have to do. He assaulted a franchise employee. Comforting Pines procedure dictates I hold him until he is no longer at risk. Well, there's got to be something you can do. His son needs him. Well, you're welcome to look through the manual. But if it's not in there, I can't do it. <sighs> You'd think something so complicated would be a little more pleasurable to read. Wait. I think I found something. Okay. Apparently, if Dale acts crazier, Comforting Pines is required by law to turn him over to a state mental hospital for an emergency psychiatric evaluation. Peggy, we are trying to get Dale out, not further in. It will work, Hank. Once Dale is admitted, the state hospital will test him, realize he's not crazy, and let him go.
<sighs> I don't know, Peggy. Ike, either you have daily evaluated by the same government that runs the post office, or by a guy who used to sell cheeseburgers. Huh. The post office. All right, I'll go tell Dale. Uh, as soon as Nancy comes home. You don't know what love is! Joseph, I assure you we do. After all, we made that. Oh, come on! So that's it. I act batty, they send me to the battier house, then they let me go? Yep, pretty much. You think you can handle it? Anything for my Joseph. I got this. This better work, because I can't stay here. This place is seriously nuts. One of the patients likes me and wants to carve our initials in my head. Calm down, Dale. We're almost there. They're just going to ask you some easy questions. All you have to do is act normal. Anything for my son. Look at him. He needs me. All right, let's begin. Please state your name. Dale Gribble. On Earth... On Pleiades, it's unpronounceable. Uh, Mr. Gribble, do you believe people conspire against you? People, animals, insects, especially the insects. You don't even want to know what the bark beetle has to say about me. And everyone knows what George Washington Carver did with peanuts, but nobody knows what he did to peanuts. He weaponized them. Uh... Thank you, Mr. Gribble. Okay, I think we've heard enough. Recommendation is for commitment. Commitment? No! Joseph, listen to me. This may be my last opportunity to tell you this. I know you know a thing or two about sex. You're old enough, and you often forget to delete your internet history. But you just know the physical stuff. Sex is also mental, and you're too young to handle those emotions. That's why I think you should wait. My dad is not crazy! Uh, yeah, he is, according to the state of Texas. <laughs> Please, son, save your precious flower! Lori, I don't want to go all the way with you! What? That's so lame. Don't you want to be... cool? Sorry, Lori. No means no. <laughs> <laughs> what about going halfway? This thing with Miguel is like an arms race. He went after bullies, I countered with dementia awareness, then he started some organization called the Society for Children with No Bones. I mean, I don't even think that's a real thing. <laughs> hey, that doctor probably knows about some great new diseases. Gotta get in on the ground floor, Shug. Joseph, you did the right thing. I'm so proud of you. Yeah, Lori broke up with me, though. It hurts so much. It's like my heart is a really sad man. Breakups never get easy. You know, we should get rid of those photos of Lori on your phone. Tell you what, when I get home, I'll help you smash it to pieces. I hope you get out soon. I will. Due to budget cuts, they redefined what constitutes insanity. Guess who squeaked by? Oh, almost forgot. I made you something. Spaghetti and meat bugs! My favorite! Go long, Bobby! I got it! I got it! <laughs> Dang it, Bobby. Football tryouts are in two days. So, I'll just be running back. That was your position, right? They have to give it to me. Son, you don't get to be running back just because your dad was. We fought a whole war with England over that. <sighs> Maybe you should go out for center. It'll allow you to put your God-given immobility to good use. Oy. Ready, set, hike! Bobby, snap the ball. Uh... This ball's the only thing holding me up right now. I know what you're going through, Hank. Joseph doesn't want to follow in my footsteps as towel manager. He wants to be quarterback. Maybe Bobby could be towel manager. <laughs>
I want Bobby to compete for a spot on the team. I don't want him just handed it. Handed it? Towel tryouts are brutal. And word down at the laundromat is there's this girl, Kathleen. She's the one to beat. Spent the last three summers folding linens at Bed Bath & Beyond. Well, at least you'd be part of the team. And you'd get to hear the coach's pep talk. Yeah, this might work. Sounds good to me. I love towels. I'll be just like that bear in the fabric softener commercial. Oh. Nice, Gribble. I take a lot of baths. So I finally got up the guts to ask Nancy for raising my allowance. It did not go well. I did it, Dad. I'm the new towel manager. No, I couldn't have done it without Joseph. He worked up quite a sweat making quarterback. All right, right Bobby. Bobby. Oh, that's good. Yeah, man, right, Bobby. My boy is on a team. <laughs> not a squad, not a club. A team. One, four, and three. Yeah, yeah, yeah! Dale, what are you cheering for? Joseph just threw an interception. Huh? Bobby just handed off the fresh towels, put the dirties in the hamper, and didn't fumble once. That's the hat trick. Really? <laughs> well, all right. Go, Bobby! Show that hamper who's boss. Good practice, boys. Whataburger's on me. Yeah! Hell, you ain't going anywhere till every jockstrap is as clean as a surgeon's mask. Let's go moving. Hustle don't stop till you leave the field. Hey, Get towel on. manager. Got a little time for an old running back? Oh, this stinks. All I do is get towel snapped by the players and yelled at by coach. He yelled at you? Really? What'd he say? He said, he'll... He knows your name? Well, that means you're really part of the team. Well, looks like you've got some hard work ahead of you. Enjoy it, because you've earned it. <sighs> Bobby Hill, those roses not squirt water if that's what you're looking for. They're lovely. I started growing roses after the doctor cut off my Xanax. Very relaxing to have total control of another living thing. Mind if I try? Okay, but just one. Oh, this is kind of nice. And they smell so much better than jock straps. Hmm, maybe to you. Bobby, are you sniffing glue or feeding a wounded bird? Either way, I will not have it at my dinner table. It's a flower from Mrs. Soup and Noose and Pone's garden. Mom, you ever think about growing roses? Of course not. Do you think I want my house to look like a grave? Now, hold on here. I don't want to hear about any roses unless we're talking about the Rose Bowl. Hey, maybe you could towel manage that someday. I'm not sure Good I... Good point. You've got to hone your skills. The game this week will be a real test. It'll be your first time folding in front of a crowd. Quick, son, show me what you've got. <sighs> Looking for a plant? Which one of these sticks is going to turn into roses? That one? Maybe. I don't know. I just got transferred from fabrics. It says roses. Yeah, I told you. Okay, the tag says they need food and water and sun and dirt and love. Can I substitute extra love for sun? I kind of have to hide these in my bedroom closet. No way, man. That'd be going against the tag. Unless... Okay, I know someone who can help you, but the problem is that he's at another store, and, like, you're at this store. I have a bike. Oh, that changes everything. <laughs> um, can we help you? Yes. Uh, Ricky at the Megalomart told me to see you about growing stuff indoors. Don't say anything. He told me to tell you I'm cool. He's cool. So, uh, 
What kind of herbage you growing? They're roses. Oh. Well, those are legal now. You can grow them outside. My dad doesn't like me outside unless I'm on a football field. He only wants me to do stuff that you can win. You tell your dad that Lao Tzu said, the wise stay behind and go ahead. They want nothing and have everything. Yeah. Huh? It means competing against others is not the way to happiness. You want to know more? Check this out. Chinese philosophy. Huh. Is that why you guys seem so happy? <laughs> <laughs> One cannot cause growth. One can only let growth. Huh. We're getting skunked. How is this happening? Oh my god. Where's Bobby? Ah! Blue 32! Blue 32! Yikes! Hi. No! He's going the wrong way! I've seen this before. It's total towel chaos. The team needs me. I'm coming, Joseph! Bobby! I don't know what I'm gonna do when I see him. I might kill him. Bobby, if you're gonna hide from me, at least have the guts to do it without a nightlight. Hey, Dad, what's going... Oh, the game! It was a disaster. There was sweat and mud everywhere. Oh, God, the slipping. The horrible slipping. You got cut from the team. Kathleen Barnes is the new towel manager. Thanks to you, a girl is doing our team's laundry. Now get out of my sight. This house is going to be TP'd tonight. That's a given. Now, what do you have to say for yourself? Well, I guess towel manager wasn't in my cosmic path. I wish Kathleen all the best of karma. The best of what? What were you doing in that closet? Nothing. Sticks and lights? Is this some kind of puppet theater? They're roses, Dad. <laughs> roses. I'm trying to teach the boy how to compete in the real world, build up his confidence a little, and all he wants to do is sniff flowers. Oh, Hank, what's the big deal? Well, now I know where Bobby gets his what's the big deal attitude. Well, if it's so important to you, take him to go see a rose growing competition. Rose competition? Come on, Peggy, there's no such thing. Oh, yes, there is. Men goes all the time. It's probably because she's very unhappy in her marriage. So what? I pretend it's a sport and... And he'll pay attention because it's something he loves. It's like when I try to get through to you, I mention propane. Huh. Bobby, I've got some good news, but I want you to promise you're not going to squeal like a girl. I've decided to let you grow your roses. Uh, and the best part is... I'm entering you into a rose contest. You get to compete against the top, uh, old women, I imagine, in the county. Compete? But Lao Tzu says the way of the sage is to act, but not to compete. There, that thing you just said, that's what I'm trying to fix. Son, you've got to try at something and give it your best shot. You like flowers? Well, make us proud and be the best damn rose grower in town. Now, what do you say, tough guy? Are you ready to grow the hell out of those roses? You bet I am! Whoa, 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 where are you going? Outside. Now that you're okay with them, I might as well put these thirsty little piggies in the ground. Now, where'd I put that floppy gardening hat? You can't grow them outside. People will see you. And, uh, steal your gardening secrets. You'd better stay in the closet until you win. Then you can plant them in the front yard, and if anybody gives you any guff, you can show them your trophy. Or sash. Or sash. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Check out that engine. It hauls so much ass, I can drive it to work. <laughs> yeah, she's a monster. Uh-huh. Yeah. Monster. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'll get it. 
Hmm. Yeah, uh, hello, ladies. Uh, I'm here to um, sign up for that uh, big rose off you got going on. Are you that guy who just moved in from Portland? Grew the Madame Plantier that won mini princess of show? Well, I understood that one word, grew, but I do know I am not the mini princess of anything. Why not? Forget to prune your side buds? <laughs> <laughs> Here's a sign-up sheet for the show. Don't let them get to you. They treat anybody who isn't sponsored by miracle Grow lower than fertilizer. Excuse my language. Oh, no problem. So how many pounds was the rose that won last year? Pounds? Is that a joke? No. I mean, I saw that pumpkin on the news they had to carry out on a forklift. Bigger is better at these things, right? Size is only 10% of your score. There's form, color, substance, stem and foliage, balance, and proportion. I'm sorry, I didn't know. Cultivating roses isn't some moron hobby like lawn growing. It's science and art. You think you can just wake up one morning, flip on a pair of gardening clogs, and play with the big boys? No, sir! Hey, no reason to get excited here. My wife and I are just trying to get our son involved in something easy to give him a little confidence. Your son? A little boy should be collecting baseball cards and catching fireflies, not spending sleepless nights trying to urge the perfect rosebud to blossom. How dare you steal that boy's innocence? Now get out of this gardening section. You make me sick. Sunshine, your only sunshine. Am I in? Am I in? You're in, all right, Tiger. This is so great. I don't know if it's the stem massage or my singing, but these babies are really responding to something. You think you can just wake up one morning, flip on a pair of gardening clogs, and play with the big boys? Uh, you know, this closet is bigger than it looks. Mind if I sit in and help a bit? You mean it? Sure. That will be cushion doesn't work, but you can still use it as a cushion. Hey, you fixed it! Wait, am I supposed to cut above the bud or under the bud? Well, Lao Tzu would say that you must let the cut make itself. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna check the American Rose Association rule book. Oh my God, listen to all these reasons we can be disqualified. Misnaming, misclassing, unlabeled, mislabeled, stem on stem? Are we stem on stemming? Dad, you gotta relax. Roses can pick up on your vibe. Dang it, Bobby, cut the Benny Hanna talk. Okay, don't panic. They can pick up on that too. I guess this must be some kind of rose growing store for kids. Excuse me, sir. I need to replace this grow light. Is that so, officer? It's okay, guys. He's cool. Oh, come on, man. That lamp is for high school kids. Step up to the phototrons. They rock. They'll force your buds, increase your yield, and your potency. Just call me from outer space and tell me it ain't true. Wow. <laughs> How'd you like to see that in our closet, Bobby? Would I? We're gonna grow the best roses ever! Okay, this setup will cost you about two grand. Two grand? You got a job, right? I have a great job. But still, it... dang it. No wonder all those other rose growers have sponsors. Hey, what would you fellas say to sponsoring us in our rose competition? Well, man, competition ain't really our buzz. Lao Tzu says, to be better than someone is to be worse than all. Wrap your mind around that one, dude. Well, wrap your minds around this. We'll wear Stems and Seeds t-shirts, and you could put the roses in those vases. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, fellas, this is important. You see, our, our great, great country, country was positive no. values like competition, the American way, hearts and minds, and yeah, Mr. Yes. Association Commissioner Murray Hogarth. All if stems and seeds would just sponsor us. What do you say, guys? We need more of this weed and more of this dude. We'll do it. All right. All right. You need this drip this. system, this, this uh, irrigation meter. Course, I am your sunshine, your only sunshine. Oh, oh what are you doing? 
Sloppy side bud removal requires penalization. Here, let me. All right, Bobby, game day is tomorrow. You're in the single vase category, so you gotta pick one player to send in. This one's pretty. Not according to the book. If you go by the checklist, this one's perfect. But I like how mine's a little off-center. It's got wabi-sabi. You can't win an argument by making up words. Wabi-sabi is an Eastern tradition, Dad. It's celebrating the beauty and what's flawed. Like the crack in the Liberty Bell or the mole on Sandy Crawford's face. The Liberty Bell is great, but come on, if it was in a contest with a bunch of bells without cracks, it would lose. But sometimes it's the small imperfections that make you love something even more. So what if this rose is a little too short and a little too wide? It's got more personality than those other ones. Uh-huh, but we're out to win. Ah, Morgan, my former student. Your flower looks like an anus with a stem. What do you call it? Hello, Monroe. I crossed an Oakington ruby with a dainty bess. I call it a ruby, my dear, but I might as well call it sending you home crying to your mama. <laughs> yes. Dude, all these roses remind me of my mom's tattoo, but they don't smell like arm. But you better let me do that, son. Nice, dude. Nice. Okay, I'm just gonna give it a final mist so it'll look like morning dew is dripping off its velvet petals. But I must say, nicely spiraled center. Hmm. Good work, kid. You hear that, Bobby? You could win this thing. Dude, that million dollars is ours. There's no cash prize. It's just for honor, dude. Dude, that honor is ours. Dad, why don't we turn it a little to the side so this leaf looks like it's waving to the judge? Well, all the pictures in the book are from this angle. But if it's turned away just a little, it's more coy, like, have we been properly introduced? Here, like this. Uh, hands off. You're queering the spiral. Come on, it's my... Oh. Oh. oh, dang it, Bobby. It's bruised. Oh, you tweaked our rose. Mm. Cheers. Nice. Down. Oh, God, I'm going to have to remove interior petals. Get me my decalaged shears and my stamp tongs. Stop. Oh. Shears down. Nice stature. Quite voluptuous for a floribunda. Arrow straight stem, fine balance, and proportion. What is that? That? That's nothing. You pulled a petal, didn't you? You pulled an interior petal. Ah, uh, yes. Hmm. That's too bad. Otherwise, the rose is truly flawless. Uh, no, no, wait. Uh, haven't you ever heard of that oriental deal that says that something can be wrong with something, but it just makes it better? Yeah, dude, wabi-sabi. Right, that. It's like that model with the wart on her face. Isn't she pretty? Mm -hmm. Sorry, it's flawed. You lose. You're a loser, which means I'm a loser, which means my dad was right. You blew it, man. Oh, I wish I had my Tibetan prayer beads. I'd hot tie you and leave you to rot. But what about Lao Tzu? Lao Tzu lived in a hut and ate straw. And Queen of Show to Ruby, my dear. Ha! Queen of Show, baby! Yeah! Who's the queen? You know it! <gasps> Dad, no! Don't bury my roses! It was my fault, not theirs! I'm planting them, Bobby. But I didn't win. Well, that's okay. The Cowboys don't win every year, but I'm still a big fan. And they have gun and drug problems. I was thinking about it, and my singing didn't really help the roses. My voice just isn't that good. But check this out. Uh, 
son. Yeah, Dad? <sighs> You've got a lot of wabi-sabi. <laughs> Peggy Hill, thanks for inviting us to barbecue. Far not to be rude, but is this name brand soda? It tastes kind of skunky. Well, of course it's name brand. It's Meglomart Private Select. <sighs> Idiots. Are the hot dogs ready? I got a movie to catch in 12 minutes. You're leaving? No, this is a couple's event, and there's this movie I'm dying to see. This one's got a Calkin and a Baldwin in it. Well, the dogs will be done in a few seconds. Oop, they're plumping. Hey, I was gonna sit there. Sorry. You said you're gonna sit there. Eventually. Dale, we have got to try this restaurant. Okay, everybody, dogs are up. Now, Bill's in a rush, so he gets first crack. Now, be speedy. Okay, we've got ketchup, mustard, relish over there. Jesus. Whoa, look at him go. Bill, Bill, those dogs are for everyone. That should do it. Wow, if there were... Thirteen more dogs on that platter, Mr. Dotry would be in the Guinness Book of World Records. And did you see how excited Bobby was about that hot dog eating record? If he ever puts together fame and eating, oh, well, he might end up like a, what was the name of that large comedian who died? But it's nice for Bill to finally have something he's good at. Might give him a reason to live and whatnot. What Bill needs is a healthy relationship. Look how I turned your life around. Now, guess what? I finally got a woman to agree to go out with him. My God, you're kidding. Who? Sonny Edmonds, the new librarian. The perky one? No, the one who won't make change. Did you try the perky one? Yes, I did, and it took the perk right out of her. Yep. Bill, what the hell was up with you and the hot dogs? That was the most disgusting thing I've ever seen in my life or on the Internet. I'm sorry. I was in a hurry. The movie sucked. We had to wait a whole three minutes for Hank to throw on more dogs. Does your selfish gluttony know no end? No. Now, wait a minute, Bill. Eating 12 hot dogs in a minute is kind of a, well, a, a talent. Hmm. I hadn't thought of it that way. Nice, Hank. Do you want him to be this lonely pant load for the rest of his life? As a matter of fact, Peggy's got a gal who agreed to go out on a date with Bill. <coughs> oh. That's right. An actual woman. No. Yep. Dinner. Tomorrow night. Maybe you could figure out what's causing that, uh, god-awful smell in your car? That was a frog. I guess I'll get rid of it. Oh, I almost forgot. At dinner, do not order chicken. Sonny is terrified of birds. Roger that. By the way, I took the liberty of changing our dinner reservations to pea soup Swenson's. I can show off my talent, as you say. If you eat ten bowls of soup, everyone at your table eats free. Seven. Oh, Sonny, you can order yourself another whiskey sour. It's all going to be on the house, because I am a soup-eating machine. <laughs> You promised me a fat George Clooney. This is not a fat George Clooney. Nine. Did Sonny go to the bathroom? I think I'm wowing her. She left, Bill. Did she see a bird? Oh, you disgusted her. Mmm, mm, I like the way you eat soup. Are you making fun of me? If you are, it's okay. I just like to know. Hell no. I follow the sport of competitive eating very closely. But I've never seen you before. Cindy Beauchamp, fan. Bill Dotrieve. What do you mean by sport? I figured you were some dark horse chow hog in town for the hot dog eating championship. Haven't you ever heard of the IFOCE? The International Federation of Competitive Eating? 
Okay, you are making fun of him. We get the joke. Ha ha ha. Now move along, lady. The IFOCE is the real deal. They're like the NFL of competitive eating. You know, Bill, tomorrow night, Dan Vasty, one of the greats in the sport, is having a party over in McManerbury. You should come. Meet the other eaters. Hmm. I never say no to a party in McManerbury. I have a feeling about you. And I have slept with enough competitive eaters to know greatness when I see it. Dang. Hank Hill. Ken Yirawadi. So, are you an eater? Yeah. The ocean noodle champion. I'm branching out into hot dogs. No kidding. My neighbors lay ocean. You know a guy named Khan? You're gonna wear the belt one day, baby. Hey, Cindy. Mazawa. When are you going to drop these fat American losers and get with number one? Hey. You the look damn sexy, wearing nothing but my mustard yellow championship belt. You know, I think your mustard yellow belt is going to look pretty good around my fat American gut. Baby, you're not ready yet. Not for Nasawa. Who are you? I'm Big Bill Doty. Come next weekend, I'm going to eat the hell out of you. Ha! Chump! You don't know who you're messing with. Oh, yeah. i tell you who you're messing with. The USA! 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 Breathe and swallow, Bill. Breathe and swallow. Come on, you're eating for America. I don't get it. Are you training him to be an athlete or a colossal fat ass? Dang it, Dale. When did you get to be such a negative Nelly? Why don't you try being a positive Pete? Oh, you poor deluded redneck. You actually think you can eat more hot dogs at Nozawa? Ah! Personally, my money on Ken Irovati. The Laotian commotion. He, the Michael Jordan of Laos. Keep going, Bill. You've got to be able to focus with distractions, no matter how annoying they are. Guess you haven't heard of... Belt of Fat Theory! Belt of Fat? That's why fat guys can't keep up with the skinny Asians. Your stomachs are trapped in Belt of Fat. Got no room to stretch. Irrawaddy not only skinny and flexible, rumor has it, he got two stomachs. Huh. I met him at a party and his stomach seemed perfectly normal. You met Irrawaddy? Was he wearing the scarf I knit for him? Mom. <gasps> mm-hmm. Yes, what? Look what I made for Dad in shop class. A bird feeder. Or a shoebox. I'll let him decide. Throw down those dogs. Hey, what's Mr. Dotree doing? <gasps> Whatever it is, it sure is making him popular. Is he eating? Let me see that. <clears throat> what did you do? Obviously, you need to work on your adhesives. I wouldn't show this to your father just yet, but but good try. Okay, now you just need to rank in the top five to qualify, so you don't have to dazzle, you just have to place. Remember, Honey Bear, it's not Roman rules. So whatever you do, don't vomit. You keep those doggies in your tummy, and Cindy will give you the nummy nummy. Next up, Nazawa versus Ken Irrawaddy. <laughs> He nodded me! He nodded me! Mm, they're pretty fast. But here's the doe tree strategy. Start off slow, build the momentum, and then kick hard to the finish line. Those dogs are going down. Yeah, baby. Yeah, strap on the feed bag, you tragic behemoth. How many dogs will it take to make you feel whole inside? Shut up, Dale. This man is eating for his country, Dale. What you're doing is treason. Because that was down. I've heard that sound before. Hello, colostomy bag. That's rules! All fall before the might of your Irrawaddy, 25 and a quarter. Irrawaddy is now leading the pack. Last contestant, Dotree. You're soloing. Come on, baby, focus. <sighs> it's go time. Hail the conquering fat ass, a lonely pig gorging himself on the lips and anuses of his brothers. Dale, why don't you shut your skinny little no-hot-dog-eating mouth? You know, I figured out what your problem is. 
Oh, really? Mm-hmm. I think you're a little jealous of the Dout Reeve. Jealous? On your mark, get set, go! Jealous of this? Any idiot can eat hot dogs. It's not a talent. Look, I'll go two at a time. See? It's nothing special. I can eat three at a time. Who cares? He's tri-dogging. Come on, Bill. Wolf it. Dotree, 22 and a half. New guy, 34 and an eighth. Congratulations, gentlemen. You both qualify. What's your name, Gurgitator? Del Gribble. Gribble! Gribble! Gribble USA! USA! Gribble! Gribble! USA! Dude, will Gribble, you sign my face? USA! Huh? Gribble, Gribble, what about USA! the Dough Chief? Gribble, Gribble. Why? Tell me. Why give me a great gift only to snatch it away? What did I do? Huh? Did, did I ask for too much? Did I fly too close to the sun on my beautiful hot dog wings? Why do you like Dale better? I hate you! I'm so sorry, I didn't mean that. Please, help me eat more hot dogs than Dale! Please! Boy, I still can't get over Dale. What a dogger. That little alley of yours is turning into quite a freak show. What do I do now? Ah, dang it, Bill. I've got to go with the winner tomorrow. This country's honor is at stake. Well, I do not know how much longer I can keep Bobby away. Today, he heard Bill training, so I stabbed my thumb with a ballpoint pen to distract him. Good work. Thank you. I think it's infected. So, have you gotten a chance to read my short story? I kind of had to, you know, go, had some stuff to do. Fresh baked muffins, anyone? You know I love muffins. Got any cranberry, banana, macadamia, nut? Actually, that's all I've got. Oh, when it comes to muffins, I can't help myself. I'm a muffaholic. Mmm. Hey, Hank, Bill baked fresh cranberry, banana, macadamia, nut muffins. Bill, Boomhauer's <laughs> allergic to macadamias, and you know I don't eat cranberries. We've had this conversation before. Wait a minute. Uh, my muffin. Dang it, don't you see what he's doing? He's filling you up so you won't be able to compete today. That is an outrageous accusation. You're sabotaging your friend and your country. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. But, um, no, oh, I'm sorry. But what am I supposed to do? I want to bring home the mustard yellow belt to America. Me, the doe tree. Oh, for God's sakes, Bill. I wasn't even planning on going to the competition. <sighs> Dale, Lady Liberty is a proud woman. She doesn't like to ask her boys for help, but when she does blow the horn of freedom, I tell you, mister... I'm sorry, Hank, but I'm not joining that freak show. How can you say that? Because I'm a freak. I know. I've been there, and I don't want to go back. Srut. It was the fifth grade. I had a touch of the social anxiety disorder, and medication was not readily available or indeed invented yet. I had a hard time making connections with people. Did you see that? Yuck, that guy ate a bug. Ew, do it again. By the next week, I was putting on shows at recess. I was an eating machine, crickets, spiders, dung beetles. I thought I was so cool. What a freak. <laughs> Remember, Bill, just because you have their attention doesn't mean you have their respect. So, Bill, 
I guess you're America's only hope. Are you in? I am so in. Hell. Is there any chance I might be able to get some alone time with Dale and mm, persuade him? Keep your pants on, lady. My wife's hotter than you and she throws more sex at me than I know what to do with. Cindy, believe in the big man. Show me a miracle, baby. The outlet mall is a bit of a drive, but God help me, I love those discontinued pantsuits. Hey, look, the county fair. Something about a hot dog contest? I could go for a hot dog. Maybe even two. Oh, good. Here's another song. Mom, what are you doing? Well, you know, it just occurred to me. I have never taken you fishing. Gurgitators, hands on the table. Judges, you ready? On your mark, get set. Hey! Yeah, all right. Dang it. Hirawati's already up two dogs on Bill. He's got a kick. Too soon. He'll flame out. Laos rules. Laos rules. Uh, aren't we supposed to have fishing rods? Fishing rods? <laughs> have you ever seen a bear use a fishing rod? <laughs> Here, use the tackle God gave you. Look, there's a sturgeon. Slap it out of the water, Bobby. Where? I don't see it. Oh, you're scaring him away with all your talk, talk, talking. Look, Bill's kicking. He's kicking. Come on, work it. He's ahead. Go, Bill. Attack the dog. Attack the dog. USA. USA. Come on, you know what? Laos is depending on you. Go tree. Go, go tree. Is he? Is he? He is! He's quitting! All right, Bill! No! no come on, Bill! USA! USA? Hey, I'm full. I know, buddy. Just another 15 dogs. But they're laughing at me. Do I have to keep doing this? Uh... I guess it's for America. You know, Bill, America doesn't need to win every dang thing to be great. We've got the Constitution, two George Bushes, great toilets. Hell, we played golf on the moon. I guess we can let Laos have a stupid wiener contest, can't we? What the hell are you doing? Bill, you fool, there's still time. Dude, get back in there and eat like the wind. Thank you for the hot dogs, but I've had enough to eat. I bid you good day. And the winner, Chad Irrawaddy from Leo's! <laughs> this is the proudest day of my life. Oh, that's it. I'm quitting music and putting on the bib. So, uh, things still on with Cindy? No. Well, at least you got a little chicka womp womp. Actually, we were saving it for tonight. Ooh. My dear. Had a boy, Bill. The worst part of going on vacation is the look on her face when we head out the door. Are we talking about Ladybird or Peggy? Whoa, down, girl. Hi, guys. Meet my new friend, Buster. Say hello, Buster. Pretty dog, weak handshake. Buster, play. Boy, Bill, that is a magnificent animal. Yeah, I got him through a new military program where you adopt the pet of a GI while he's on his tour of duty. Well, all right, that's a great way to serve our country, supporting our enlisted men one dog at a time. Hey, I was just going to take Ladybird up to the lake. You and Buster want to come along? Sorry. Buster does his community service at the BFW today. 
Some of those old guys haven't felt the tongue on their face for years. Here, yeah, boy. Hey, Bill, can civilians get in on this, or is it just a perk for the armed forces? Anyone can do it. All you have to do is take a pledge to perform all functions necessary and possible for the animal's well-being. A pledge? Okay, now, we start here. Two weeks from today, we drive 400 miles and catch a riverboat tour up the mighty Mississippi. Then it is on to Graceland in Memphis, and then to the Cowboys-Titans game in Nashville. And on the way back, we get to stop at Willis's famous barbecue where the ribs fall off the bone or your money back. Now, Bobby, Memphis to Nashville. That's a long stretch without a rest stop. I'm already training. I've had four glasses of water today. It's been two hours and nine minutes, and I feel fine. Peggy, Bobby, great news. We can adopt the dog of a G.I. while he's on his tour of duty. Uh -uh. I don't know, Hank, another dog. Not just any dog, the dog of a soldier. Come on, think about our patriotic duty. I'll take care of it, I promise. I'll do everything. You won't even know it's here. We are going on vacation in two weeks. We're gonna have to board Lady Bird as it is. Don't worry, I told the military we can't take the dog until after we get back from our trip. Well, as long as it doesn't interfere with the vacation, I suppose it's All okay. right. It's nice to see him so happy. A koozie? Since when are you so fancy all of a sudden? You too good for us now? Hey, guys. You are looking at a guy who has just been approved for the GI Foster Pet Program. Yay! Oh, go, man. Do you know what kind of dog you're getting? No, but his name's Duke. You tell me a dog named Duke won't take a bullet for you. This is so amazing. He knew it was empty. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. We don't have to go through Oklahoma. Hill residents. This is Army Sergeant Williamson. We're going to need you to take possession of Duke between 0900 and 0915 tomorrow morning. What? But I thought I made it very clear that we didn't want Duke until after we got back from our vacation. Patriotism doesn't take a vacation, sir. This is the smallest bottle of Prell that I have ever seen. Check out the lotion. Dang it, I just used it all. Uh, I got a call from the armed forces. Duke is coming a little earlier than expected. Uh, like tomorrow. But we're leaving in less than a week. You just call them back and tell them it's too early. Don't worry, I talked to the guy who owns the farm where Ladybird is gonna stay, and he says another dog would be no problem. Why do we need toilet seat covers? One word, Tennessee. They'll be here any second. Is everybody ready? You're, uh, you're wearing that? Dog, Hank. It's a dog. Car. Hey, Bill, my dog's about to be delivered. That's great. I just got a gift basket from my GI. Get this. He's a blue angel. He's the one that made France mad by flying under the Eiffel Tower. Oh my God, they're here. Good morning, Mr. Hill. On behalf of the armed forces, thank you for your generosity. I present to you, Duke. Come here, boy. Uh, Hank, looks like that cat ate your dog. Uh, about Duke. He's a cat. I was supposed to get a dog. My neighbor got a dog. Yeah, and I wanted to be an F-18 pilot. One psych exam later, I'm delivering you a cat. Uh, oh wait, I already have a dog, so a cat would be in danger. That would be treason, right? Sir, is this your signature here, sir? <sighs> yes. And is this your two-page addendum stating how it would be your honor to fulfill your patriotic duty? I believe you quoted the Star Spangled Banner in its entirety. Dad! 
cat? <sighs> okay, this won't be so bad. I bet while we're gone, we can board Duke for just a few more dollars a day. Lovely. And in the meantime, where are we going to keep this? Well, Private Hennessy left us an information dossier we're supposed to follow. Let's see what he says. Mom, look out! Oh! oh. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. No. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> Hank looks like the cat is out of the bag. <laughs> oh, this has been a cat astrophe. Ah, <laughs> uh, cat. Uh, you got a cat. <laughs> so one of our fighting men has a cat. What of it? Hey, guys. Wow, you two are looking good. I see the perfect fusion of master and animal. I can't tell where one ends and the other begins. Oh, I feel great. Good old Buster's built my wind up. Well, that must be Duke. He's... Cute. Dang it, Bill. Why didn't you tell me you could get stuck with a cat in this program? Come on, Hank. Cats aren't so bad. One of Buster's best friends is a cat that does recon missions with a camera strapped to his back. Now, I don't think yours does that, though. <laughs> oh, oh. <clears throat> Try this. Once you start playing with it, you won't want to stop. Uh, no thanks. I just need to get some cat food. You see, I was recently forced to take care of a cat, and I need to know which one of these I should buy. Quickly. Oh, all that stuff is garbage. What your cat needs is this. Scientific formula. Eighteen dollars a bag? What's wrong with all this other stuff? Well, between you and me, it's practically inedible. We should really be in jail for carrying it. <sighs> all right, fine. Give me a bag of the scientific formula. Ooh, which flavor? I recommend the Italian herb chicken. Delicious. Do you think Private Hennessy enlisted just to get away from that thing? Oh, put it out of your mind, Hank. In a week, we'll be at Graceland. I wonder if they'll let us shoot a television. Hank! Oh, Bobby, get Duke off the dinner table. He just threw up. I don't want to touch him. Pick him up with a napkin. Do you want me to take him off the table, or do you want me to eat my vegetables? Because I can't do both. Fine, I'll do it. Ah, dang it. I hope you like the smell of a cranberry bog, because it is the only thing that counteracts the cat stink. Ugh, wave some of that stuff over here. Oh, my God, the cat has soiled in my shoes. Where is he? He's in my room. If I stop petting him, he'll bite me. I've read that dossier cover to cover, and nowhere in it does it say anything about pooping in shoes. You know, I hate this cat, but there might actually be something wrong with him. Maybe you should take him to Dr. Yandale. I can't. If there are any problems, I'm supposed to take him to Dr. Leslie at the vet consortium. That place with the valet parking? We're not paying for this, are we? We have our vacation to think about. It's like having a bomb strapped to my lap. It's part of my commitment. I can't ask Duke's owner to take it out of his combat pay. I've got to go to the bathroom. Ow! I'm Hank Hill. Uh, this is Duke. We have an appointment with Dr. Leslie. What's the nature of your cat's problem? Uh, he's pooping in my shoes. Okay, go ahead and have a seat. And we ask that you please not make eye contact with Mr. Javier's parrot. He's got anger issues. Hello, you must be Duke's caregiver. I'm Dr. Leslie. How are you feeling today, Mr. Duke? Uh, yeah, so I don't know cats, so I can't really tell if anything is wrong. That's the thing about animals. They can't tell us what's wrong. And take it from me, they can't understand our jokes. <laughs> Why don't you gently restrain him so I can take some blood and check his vitals? Uh, yeah, don't you have a strap or a clamp or something? If you prefer, you could lay on the examination table and hold Duke to your chest. Oh. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> Very good. Well, everything seems normal, Mr. Hill. Oh, great. Then I just need you to sign this army form stating that, uh, everything within reason has been done to ensure the proper health of said animal. Everything hasn't been done, Mr. Hill. Sure, Duke looks normal, but I did not spend four extra years specializing in small animal treatment to just look. I want to do some more tests on Duke to make sure we don't miss anything. EKG, MRI, maybe an iodine trace. Okay. First off, we're going to need to ensure the Duke has been getting the proper diet. Uh, I'm way ahead of you, Doctor. I already have him on the scientific formula. You can't feed that to a cat. Mr. Hill, Duke should only be eating Vets brand. You're asking me to spend $57 on a bag of cat food? Well, we can't expect Duke to buy it on his salary. <laughs> uh, do you see? Nothing. Okay, that's going to be $543. What? Bone density test? Lactose intolerance test? Allergy panel? I know it sounds a bit pricey, but these people have all the best equipment. Well, almost all the best equipment. You never stop selling, do you, Tommy? You're in good hands. I don't have a pet, but I'd bring my son here if they'd let me. Listen, I can't afford this. I'm taking my family on vacation. I'm just doing this because I made a pledge to the Army. I don't even like cats. <laughs> Buster. Hey, boy. Ah, dang it. Okay, droop your eyelids. Now unflare that nostril. That's it. Perfect. Dad, look at my poker face. We are going to take everything from that riverboat but the paddle wheel. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry, you guys, but Duke's vet visit just cost us the riverboat stop. What? What? <sighs> this is no longer a valid trip, Tick. I knew it. I knew this whole thing would blow up in our faces. Yeah. Hank, let's just get rid of this cat. It's ruining our lives. I can't do that. It'll be fine. You'll see. Maybe we won't be able to stay in hotels, but, but we can camp in the car. Hill residents. It's Dr. Leslie. Duke's blood work came back and his blood sugar is normal. No adult onset diabetes, no hypertension, no hemophilia. Oh, that's great. But we did notice his white blood cell count is up slightly. Uh, what does that mean? Could be nothing. Could be cancer. I'm going to need you to come in with Duke right away. I'd like to do a complete physical workup to cover all our bases. I also recommend this. It's what we call a feline mobility cart. Wait, the cat can't walk? Of course he can walk, but rolling is easier. You see, it may relieve some pressure and redirect blood flow, plus alloy wheels. But all this could be for nothing, right? I mean, Duke may not have anything wrong with him. Boy, that'd be great. I'd like to go in. In? Do a small exploratory surgery, rule some things out. Uh, what's that going to cost me? Guesstimate? Between one and two and three thousand dollars. That's a lot of money. See, my family and I were kind of going on this vacation. Would it kill you not to go on vacation? Because it may kill Duke. <sighs> Do you take traveler's checks? and your stupid patriotism. I'm sure that cat will thank you for canceling our vacation by hissing at you. I expanded my bladder for this trip. Thanks a lot, Dad. <sighs> I can't believe what they want me to do to get Duke ready for surgery. To keep him sterile, I have to put on these little paper booties before he uses the litter box. Excuse me, I believe your dog left his toy in my yard? So sorry about that. He likes pretty ladies. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Here's my number in case any more of his toys go missing. Dad, Duke's wheels tracked poo all over my bed sheets. <laughs> Tip-top news, Mr. Hill. We've eliminated even a remote possibility that Duke has lung cancer, stomach cancer, or pancreatic cancer. Oh, thank God. So, uh, can you sign the release? 
Now we can move on to Duke's circulatory and skeletal systems. Oh. $150 for a feline enema? I could do it for half that. I wish I could let you, Peggy. Duke is bleeding us dry, Hank. I think it is time to take him to our vet for a second opinion. Come on, you get the crate, I'll get the oven mitts. That's a cute little card you got him in. You have a little mouse that rides in there, too? Uh, I swore I would do all that I could for the care of this cat in writing. Well, you've had him tested from his brain to his behind. Sounds to me like uh, you have. You want me to sign that? Well, thank you, but I need Duke's vet of choice to do it, Dr. Bradley Leslie. Oh, he's top-notch. The best in his field. Uh, well, I was kind of hoping you'd tell me he was a quack and I wouldn't have to listen to him. And he's costing me a fortune. Well, he's got all those new fancy machines, and if you've got the machines, by God, you're going to use them. But truth is, sometimes cats just get old. Duke's going to die someday, but not of anything he's got right now. But he keeps vomiting. Cats vomit. They eat, poop, and vomit. That's what they do. So you're telling me I sacrificed my family's vacation so this guy can pay for his fancy machines? Yeah, you wouldn't believe how much some of them go for. Tommy, how much one of those ultra-magnetic doohickeys you keep yammering about set me back? The magnetic ultrasonic imager 9220? You don't want to know. It's so expensive, no one can make money on it. We only sold two. One in Beverly Hills and one in Aspen. I could uh, <laughs> have one delivered within the week. So wait, that machine's even more expensive than the ones Dr. Leslie has? Oh, yeah. He's got 9210. That's a solid unit. But this baby's 7% more accurate, and it comes in chrome. Can I have some of those brochures? Uh... Yeah, just take one, though. They're also really expensive. Mr. Hill, Teresa didn't tell me you had an appointment. I don't. Look, I just stopped by to tell you there will be no more surgeries or tests or anything else done to my cat. And I want you to sign this. There are still several more tests we can perform, Mr. Hill. You see, we have a responsibility to these creatures. Duke can't tell us he wants to live. Yeah, yeah, I know, and he can't joke around. But I bet if he could talk, he'd say he wants to be put through the magnetic ultrasonic imager. I've got one of those. 9220. Says here that the 9220 is 7% more accurate than the old 9210. <laughs> yes, but 7% more accuracy hardly justifies me spending that kind of money. I'd have to use the machine on pets and their owners to break even. It's just too expensive. Well, that seems like the kind of decision you'd want to leave to that woman and her bird, or that guy and whatever the hell that thing is. I'm sure they'd like to know you've been depriving them of the latest in full-body diagnostic testing. I wish I had enough of these pamphlets for everyone. Hey, I guess I could go out there and read it out loud. N -n hold on a minute. That machine would bankrupt me. I've got to draw the line somewhere. We all have to draw the line somewhere. Is that 9220 something you should be using on Frank? You can keep that pen. It's from some company that makes Viagra for lizards. Works for snakes, too. Well, it's three o'clock. Right about now, Dr. Leslie is turning Duke over to Private Hennessy. Look, I know this isn't the kind of trip we all had in mind. Bobby, why don't you go ahead and have the 21 rib salute? Really? It's not an entree, it's an event. So, how much money do we have left in the vacation fund? $98, which means, well, this is as far as we can go. You know, just being away from Duke feels like a holiday. Good food, family, the cowboys. Now this is what I call a dream vacation. Yeah! Army Sergeant Bill Dotree relinquishing command of Buster. On behalf of myself and the crew of the USS Eisenhower, I say thank you. <sighs> wow. How are you getting home, Sergeant? I, 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 I... You ever pulled two Gs? <laughs> Don't worry, Buster will sit on your lap. Mm.